feature this afternoon ahead of kickoff. Let's join our commentary team. Former town captain Mick Mills is alongside Brenna Woolley. We want a game to restart the season with. But you want to call it a must win, a six-pointer, or something less emotive. There's no doubting both sides head into this one, feeling quietly confident this can secure what will be a big victory. Regular strugglers Everton are currently one place, one win, and one point better off than Ipswich in the Premier League table. The home side hoping today's the day they finally secure their first victory of the season in what would be the eighth attempt. As ever these days, there's pretty much a full as we wave goodbye to the penultimate international break of the year. We give a warm welcome to run of four games before the next one. I do understand why fans are moaning a little about the Premier League schedule. It does seem to be more stop than start, doesn't it? Uh, talking of uh, starts and stopping, uh, we are about to uh, start this game roughly 15 minutes late. We uh, understand some fans were stuck outside Portman Road because of an IT issue. Hopefully everybody is in. The sun is shining at Portman Road as the two sets of players come out and stand either side of the halfway line. And Mick, how tough do you expect this one to be for Ipswich Town today? Well, first of all, when we get the, any home fixture because of this atmosphere, I think that we have a chance against everybody. Um, I really do believe that. I think it's, uh, it must be special uh, to be a player at this present moment to play in front of these supporters because they are very, very good supporters. They make a tremendous amount of noise. They're very much behind their team because of what's happened in the last two or three years. So we have a chance, but every time we play somebody, I look at the opposition and I'm not like a lot of the, the supporters are and the local people are, ah, this is the one, this is without question the one that we're going to start our season off with and this is a, a victory for us today. This is a tough fixture. I know Everton have had their problems uh, in the season so far and they're only seven games into the season, but... Um, you know, they are a decent side, there's no question about it. Um, they, they do let goals, uh, come. teams come back uh, against them, but they have the ability to take the lead. They're not a bad side, um, and if experience is anything to go by, uh, they have got a lot of players out there that have got a wealth of experience. They've got five players over 30 years of age. The youngest player out there today is 24. So it's a very experienced side, and I know where I think this is an advantage for us to play in front of this crowd. This team of Everton have played in front of this type of atmosphere for a long, long time. Looking at the uh, two sides out in front of us, a couple of changes made by mo both managers, Kieran McKenna and Sean Dyke. Johnson and Greaves drop out from the side that was comfortably beaten at uh, West Ham. In come Wolfenden and Burgess for his Premier League debut. Uh, Murich in goal, in all yellow, off to our left-hand side. Is back for O'Shea, Wolfenden, Burgess and Davis. Then the two of Morsey, the captain, alongside Phillips. Then it's the three of Burns, Hutchinson and Jack Clark up top Liam Delap on the bench Walton Harry Clark Townsend Taylor Chaplin Benny Smodix Broadhead and Hurst uh, the two changes made by the visitors uh, Mikalenko and Guy come in for Ghana and Mangala Ghana doesn't make the 20-man squad at all Incidentally, the two sides, as I speak, are switching around, so Town will be playing from right to left. Uh, the Everton goalkeeper, currently jogging the length of Portman Road, is England's number one, Pickford. A back four of Young, Tarkovsky, the captain, Keane and Mikalenko. They're two in midfield, a Guy and Ducore. Then a three of Harrison, McNeil and Dye up top for them. Number nine, Calvert-Lewin. On the bench, Joe Virginia is a keeper, so too Asmir Begovic, former Town loan player Begovic, many moons ago. Tam borrowed him from Portsmouth. Patterson back from injury. Mangala, Beto, O'Brien, Coleman, and a couple of academy products, Armstrong and Dixon. Town in their pre-match huddle off to our right-hand side. They're in blue, white, blue. Everton usually, of course, play in blue. So they're in cream shirts and socks with their dark grey shorts. As uh, Ipswich Town will get this match of the season only their fourth game here town will reach november this season having played four times at portman road michael oliver one of the very best does a lot of champions league games is in charge of this game did man city against arsenal uh, last month on var 
fourth official, another experienced uh, referee, Darren Bond. Amari Hutchinson, fresh from scoring his first goal for England's under 21s uh, in the week against Azerbaijan. Also got a couple of assists in that game. He is on the uh, centre spot uh, as the two sets of players take the knee ahead of this 3.15 kickoff. If you're just joining us, you haven't missed any football. IT issues meant that a uh, few people, fair few, couldn't get into the ground ahead of three o'clock. Wolfenden rattles the ball out to the left-hand side after town kick-off. Leif Davis wins ahead of it, Jars is back and is flat on the deck near side. Isn't moving at all, Leif Davis. Referee blows his whistle for the second time and uh, is just going to have to look towards the town bench. Davis might need a little rubber the magic sponge very early on in this game. Yeah, just unlucky really from right from the kickoff. Uh, Luke Wolfenden's raking ball out towards the left touchline. He didn't quite get enough on it, Luke, really. It wasn't a perfect ball out, and uh, Leaf had decided he's going up to head it uh, when he, the opponent went up at the same time, and he was just caught. Taken right off his feet, he really was. You know, that would have been a, a nasty landing, let's put it that way. Winded, but he's up, he's okay. And able to continue in the teams as we suspected, just to confirm that O'Shea is at right back for Ipswich Town. So keeping an eye on Indai, far side, and uh, Mikalenko has gone to left back for Everton. Ashley Young, who has been playing there, the 39 year old, most definitely near side, Everton right. There is uh, Michael Keane, his brother Will played for Ipswich Town a couple of spells. Keane and Tarkovsky were colleagues at Burnley, now reunited with Sean Dyche at Goodison Park. Keane flings the ball out to the right-hand side. Young touches it in field to Decore. He gives it to Idrissa Guy in his second spell as an Everton player. Came back from Paris Saint-Germain. Everton lift it wildly on the far side. Kills out of action for a throw to Dara O'Shea. Started both of Ireland's games during the uh, international break. And a former Burnley defender out there, of course, the referee Michael Oliver just down at Walk back 10 yards. Actually, he's given the throw in in the end the way of the visitors who just lob it back to a central defensive area. Two minutes gone, nil nil. No goal mouth action to talk of. It's all been in the middle third so far. Down the line, it's Jack Harrison on loan from Leeds for the second time in as many seasons. Here is Decore with those long legs of his, the number 16 in the heart of midfield for Everton. Young puts it down the right hand side. Too much on it for Harrison. Touched out square by. Burgess just back from playing for Australia. Yeah, I'm interested to see how Everton play because they are actually sort of down as being the most direct team in the division. Young with a short throw in to McNeil in field. Everton into the Ipswich area square. Uh, touched out behind by Burgess. Good attacking threat from Everton. Well defended by uh, Cameron Burgess. That looked worrying. Yeah, it was a lovely move, you know, and that's what even teams that play direct, once they get it up there, when, when they're in and around the opposition penalty area, they can still play in those areas. Everton, a serious threat from set pieces, along with Arsenal. Last season, the two strongest sides from dead ball situations in the final third. Town will know all about that. Corner kick to Everton, early doors, left-footed, and it comes from McNeil to the far post. Touched on and out behind by Murich, but the referee had seen an issue in there, so rather than a second corner, it's a free kick to Ipswich. Well, as the usual, six players in the box, defending, the, or sorry, attacking against ten of the opposition, the outfield, the whole of the outfield players in there. And when that ball was put in, I thought that Murich was slightly wrong in going for the ball. He looked as if he wasn't going to deal with it properly. In the end, we got a free kick, and I think a little bit fortunate, really. On the far side, Burns is robbed. Just looking at a replay of that incident, he got a real shove in the back at Murich from Decore, I think it was. As the ball is back with Pickford and his lime green kit. He sweeps it out to the right, miscontrolled by Young under pressure. There is Leif Davis to Morsey on the halfway line. He guides the ball back to Burgess. He'll have been pleased to have taken a couple of touches. Being involved early, Burgess. He goes back to Murich. Murich closed down by a couple of players. Threads the ball to Phillips. Phillips closed down by Guy. Bends the ball to the right-hand side to Dara O'Shea. Takes it on his chest, gives it to Hutchinson. Lovely play this from Ipswich. Down from back to front. Burns has got... Inside the area, Burns. What an attack this is. Ball back, Jack Clark! Oh, he's got to score! What a goal that would have been on the penalty spot. And he's missed the target by a mile. 
Well, it was an awful miss. It was a fabulous uh, counter break. But when we were actually playing it around at the back, I thought on about four different occasions, I thought we've lost it. It was a pass around the back that almost didn't get there, that I thought their press was going to be successful. When it hit the right touchline, we managed to squeeze out of it. And from that moment onwards, the break was on and Wes Burns was away. And I think he picked out the right one, uh, but it was a bad, bad miss. An awful attempt on goal from Jack Clark, and it would have been a wonderful goal. That was excellent football from Ipswich Town, and we, well, we knew if Burns was up against Young, he would cause him problems with his pace, but the way he got away from Mikalenko there as well, uh, was that frightening if you're an Everton follower? That could be a real issue for them, let's hope so. Burns just absolutely took him to the cleaners in a sprint, and Burns, of course, was the one carrying the ball. Well, would have done an awful lot better. But a great bit of football from the home team. Throw in from Ashley Young near side. So an England international in his day, 39 caps for his country, seven goals as well. Ashley Young, that's not a bad ratio. Ipswich with Morsey. Ball's just lifted away from him by Guy, who heads it to the far side. Dara O'Shea gets there for Ipswich. He hooks it up in the air. Michael Keane's underneath it for Everton. Nil nil. Six minutes gone on BBC Radio Suffolk Sport. Everton had that foray into the Ipswich town area from which they won a corner kick, but Town have had the best opportunity to score an opening goal so far in this game. Crossfield ball from Keane, volleyed on first time by Young, headed forward by Davis on the halfway line, controlled by uh, Ducore, Malian international, been at Everton for four years now, former Watford player. Now it's Mikalenko, back from injury to Elliman and die, poor from and die. Jack Clark intercepts, goes back to centre half by Leif Davis, and now Burgess along the floor. Started well, Burgess, been involved. Good usage of the ball to pick out O'Shea far side. Great atmosphere at Portman Road. There's Calvin Phillips, back to Wolfen, and terrible from Phillips. Oh, that was awful. Calvin Lewin, saved by Murich. Oh, what a mistake that was from Calvin Phillips. He showed. Sold Wolfenden way too short, and Calvert Lewin should have scored. Oh, well, it's, a, it's probably the, a better chance than what we had with uh, with Clark earlier on. I mean, he's one to one with the goalkeeper. They normally just slide that past the keeper, or even sort of nutmeg the goalkeeper. But they normally put those away. That was a gilt edge chance. One chance each already. Absolutely, yeah, I totally. Agree. I think he's aimed to go through his legs actually, and he mishit the ball. Should have scored. Great chance. Corner kick for Everton into the Ipswich Town area. It comes headed away by O'Shea. Not too far. He's the right foot of the lap to give it plenty welly and hit the halfway line. It's a uh, turn back by Ashley Young to Jordan Pickford. Immediately gets a stick from the home fans, but he's calm and composed as he sweeps the ball to the right. Guy charged down by Burns. Two great chances for both sides. That was a real gimme for uh, Calvert Lewin. What a let off for Ipswich Town. I suppose he's got to credit the goalkeeper. There is Phillips putting plenty on that back pass back to Burgess. Never looked like reaching Wolf and then that layoff from Phillips. And Calvert Lewin was straight on to it. Morsey. Closed down by McNeil, gets the ball to Burgess. Burgess gets it stuck between his feet, still manages to get the better of Calvert Lewin. Burgess then dinks it forward, but Michael Keane turns it back to Pickford. Belted forward off his left boot, straight through the centre circle. Wolfenden wins a header, brought down by Harrison. Given back to him by Young. There's open ground for Harrison, the number 11, to run into down the right-hand side. Just checks, comes in field, faced by a couple of blue shirts. Everton plays square in midfield, Decore along the grass to Mikolenko, early ball in from the Ukrainian beyond the far post, Harrison will go after it, he's done well to play the ball to Ashley Young, infield, McNeil outside the Ipswich area, bypasses Phillips, now it's Decore, 30 yards from goal, a little bit further, he gives it back to Mikolenko far side. Ball forward to Ndai, who might get the better of O'Shea, he has inside the air, a chance for Everton, there is the pullback, what a chance for McNeil, well done Jack Clark, and then a foul on him, McNeil didn't have the time that he wanted, that should have been another attempt on goal for Everton. Well, that's naiveness by McNeil, really, I mean, they've done everything they want to do down the left-hand side, they've got themselves in a fabulous position, when you get a rollback from only probably eight yards away, uh, there's no pace on the ball, there's no need to take a touch. I mean, 
being naive to take a touch there and expect no defender to come and take it is really crazy. I mean, that was another chance. We've had three in no time at all. Eight minutes or so? Yep. Nine and a half now gone in this delayed kickoff game. We didn't start until quarter past three here at Portman Road. Opportunities for both sides, as McMills was just saying. There is Hutchinson playing the ball out to the left hand side. Great ball by Hutchinson. Pickford thought about leaving it in the end. He's come for it. He's well out of his area. Pickford's got the ball down this right hand side. Belton against his own man Harrison. It's clouded in field. Pickford's nowhere near goal now. He is back inside his six yard area. As Town have the ball with them, um, O'Shea. Town fans were ready to enjoy that. Moore's a lovely turn in midfield. Reverse pass to Hutchinson, just runs away from Delap, picks it up just outside the area. Now inside the box, shoots across the face of goal. And it's out beyond the far post. Well, this is an entertaining <laughs> game without question, you know, and some possibly, you know, not for the same reasons as what you normally see at this sort of level, but... Everton being a fairly direct game and they really sort of have set out to sort of they mean business They really do have a go at going forward and you know consequently They have made it an end-to-end -end game without question We look good on the break and they also look good at attacking our goal So I think there's some gonna be some entertainment here this afternoon Calvert-Lewin heads the ball on Burgess wants Murich to come for it Murich stays at home Burgess has to make a decision does the right thing turns and clears to halfway Everton in the final season after 132 years at Goodison Park. Town the penultimate game for them at the end of the season before their up sticks in the summer. Calvert Lewin should have scored. Now gives the ball in field to Harrison. Miscontrols at Hutchinson. Gives the ball to Jack Clark. In field to Sam Moores. Then to Hutchinson. Town plays a nice football. Oh, that was Tarkovsky through Hutchinson. That was a forceful challenge. Hutchinson stayed down. The referee says he played the ball. That's the signal from Michael Oliver. Burgess puts it out for a throw just so that Hutchinson can be dealt with it's a wholehearted challenge from Tarkovsky the Everton skipper they're very sharp at closing down without question they're as good as anybody that I've seen so far in this division and uh, I didn't really think that was a foul I think that 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 sort of closing down took Amari by complete surprise he was wanting to completely turn on the ball and go uh, towards the opposition goal, but uh, I think he got that wrong. He should have been, he should have known that he was very tight. He should have just looked to protect the ball and no more. Everton's win so far. They got steadied the ship, then they beat uh, Crystal Palace at Goodison before uh, a draw with Newcastle last time. That was their first clean sheet, the nil nil. Pickford saved uh, an Anthony Gordon penalty uh, a couple of weeks ago. But without an away win in the last 14 in the league, you've got to go back to Burnley on the 16th of December last year. And if you remember, Everton on the team, two games in a row, led 2-0. Managed to lose 3-2 to both Bournemouth and Aston Villa earlier on this season. As Town have the ball at the back, still 0-0, 12 and a half gone. Chances for both sides. Clark should have scored for Town and then Calvert-Lewin really should have scored for... Everton after a mistake from Phillips. Ball curled forward, out of play by Burgess. Tarkovsky gets a shove in the back by uh, Liam Delap. Let's head back to Graham. I mentioned earlier, Fulham were leading Aston Villa. It's now 1-1. Southampton 2, Leicester 0, though. Wow, that'll be a big win for Southampton, their first of the season. Earlier on today, uh, West Ham led, but lost 4-1 at Tottenham. Tottenham away, Town's final game before the next international break. Home fans getting a bit hot under the collar because Everton are taking a while over this throw in midway inside their half. Sean Dyche having a, a word on the edge of his technical area down below us. I think they wanted it to be a push in the back, which it actually was by Liam Delap, and uh, they were surprised when the referee would only give them a throw in. Well, as he gets it back to Wolfenden, Wolfenden likes not to take any chances, hooks the ball out near side for another throw to uh, Ashley Young on this near side of the field. I finished in the uh, bottom six of the division the last three seasons, Everton. It's been tricky. Started last season with one win in seven as well. That's their current record. Wolfenden back to Murich. Murich then plays the ball out for a corner kick to uh, Everton. Rather cheaply there, seemed to get his legs in a tangle. Oh, this has uh, been gift wrapped, this corner kick for the visitors. Well, once Luke Wolfenden couldn't head the ball back to the goalkeeper, I think he should have ignored his goalkeeper. He wasn't in a good position to receive the ball. I think that Luke should have 
dribbled it out to this left hand side change your mind and do that corner kick number three to Everton nil nil in this game it comes to the far post, players flying towards it, none more so than Tarkovsky. None of them could intervene, and it's curled out for a Murich goal kick. Well, that's goals. the usual six in the box for a corner, and what they did, they had three inside the uh, six-yard box, you know, that were sort of pretty much making things difficult for Murich, and then the other three were in a semicircle uh, on the back post, and both corners have gone right to the deep end of the uh, six-yard box, and... They look, actually, they haven't dealt with it yet, but they look dangerous from it. They look as if they could do us in the air. Surprisingly, given the chances, this one's still nil-nil on BBC Radio Suffolk. 15 minutes played in this quarter-past-three kick-off. Tam playing it around in midfield. Delap, neat and tidy, controls it, gives it back to Burgess. He'll jog into open ground with the ball, midway inside the Everton half, tries to pick out a pass, it's intercepted. Now it's Decore near side, he'll float it forward for Calvert-Lewin. Good test this for Wolfenden. Wolfenden comes away with the ball, Calvert-Lewin goes after him. Even gives it short to Morsey, who keeps it ticking by finding O'Shea far side. Now in bright sunshine on the far touchline, Burns. Tam playing from right to left, Burns hangs it up towards Delap, beaten by Young coming in field, there is... Mikalenko gives it short to uh, Indai. Indai then goes back to Michael King, just shielding his eyes as he looks into the midfield area. Plays it off of Guy and gets it back. Still goalless. Can await Brentford in a week's time. The next home game, two weeks today, is here against Leicester City. Harrison running in field, fouled by Phillips. <laughs> For a second, the referee was going to let it go, but Phillips was going to get oh, the ball. Oh, I see what he kick. was doing. He was going to try and give advantage, but I thought, well... The player did ever so well to get up off his knees and get in pursuit of the ball, but he's got his free kick anyway. Uh, Sean Dice is not happy with the way the referee handled that, but then he's not happy with, very happy with anything. Here is Dwight McNeil coming in field. The goal creator for Everton gives it to Harrison on this right wing. Neil's continued his run. Harrison comes in field, crosses towards the far post, and then die headed down by O'Shea. Burns inside the area, makes a mess of it, and die shoots and scores. Heads are in hands, none more so than Wes Burns. 17 minutes gone, and it's the Merseyside fans who celebrate in the far corner. Everton lead 1 0. Yes, the. the I do like that from Sean Dyche's team. They're not frightened to put the ball in the box from diagonal positions. A lot of teams ignore that. They try and search for a better position to put it in the box. But Everton do it, and they look threatening on the back post. They didn't win the first ball on the back post, but they put enough pressure in that area to cause a problem. And when that ball came down, it was a town's ball. But it caused a problem in as much that we didn't deal with it properly and we gifted Everton a chance to go one up and the, the finish was brilliant. It was right into the far top corner, but the it was all gift wrapped as far as I'm concerned. Um, we didn't we didn't deal with it at all. No, I have shipped some poor goals uh, Ipswich Town so far this season. Uh, that's another one to be added to the list. Wes Burns no doubt full of apologies back there. Well, we have had the breakthrough in this game. 18 minutes gone down. Are behind. Long from Wolfenden towards Delap battling against Tarkovsky. Tarkovsky does well. He is a centre half, James Tarkovsky. One of those experienced players that Nick Mills was talking about earlier on at the start of this game. O'Shea gets the better of Ndai. Ndai robs it back off of him, then uses his body well, Ndai. He's enjoyed the last few minutes. Looking forward to Calvert Lewin. He finds him. That was excellent play by the goal scorer. Illiman in die. Back to the halfway line. Everton have it uh, again. Sign from Marseille in the summit and die. Oh, almost short by Tarkovsky to Delap. Uh, to, yeah, trying to find Pickford, which it did in the end have enough pace on it to do. Pickford's clearance goes out far side. And then underneath those very smiley, joyous Everton supporters. Showing their uh, first trip to this part of the world for a, a long old while. Town's last away win actually in the Premier League was at Goodison Park, February 2002. It's a long time. Yeah, absolutely. I was a young man then. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope that run ends. Not quite. Brentford next week. <laughs> it's 
Burgess for Ipswich Town on his Premier League debut. Looks over the top for the run of Davis. Pickford quickly out to the edge of his area. The goalkeeper who does spend an awful lot of time around about 18 yards from his goal line, uh, Jordan Pickford. Has his uh, critics and does have mad moments, but is a very, very good goalkeeper. Here he is, drops the ball down, left foot in the former Sunderland man, goes long for Everton. Bird just gets the better of Calvert Lewin. Little touch on from the toes of McNeil. Link up play again between Decore and Guy in midfield. Everton touch it back to Pickford. Hutchinson goes after the ball. Pickford gives it out short to Adrissa Guy. There is uh, Decore for this near side. Ashley Young gets the better of Jack Clark. Still got enough pace, Young, to get away from him. Then finds Harrison. Harrison takes on Davis. In comes his low cross, guided away off the forehead of Burgess. Young thought about crossing early, gives it to McNeil. Everton, who lead 1-0, passing it around. Many players but have touched the ball since the last blue had any possession. The goal scorer and die keeps it in on the far side of the field. There is Michael Keane with a dagger onto the right-hand side. Davis heads it into touch underneath us, obviously for a throw to Everton. Yeah, they've got a short passing game, but in between things, they don't mind a raking ball, whether it's a sort of cross-field ball like that, or whether they in, end up hitting from their own half up to the striker, or it's a diagonal cross. They've got everything, really. Well done, McNeil to Calvert-Lewin. Lovely touch, he shoots, and it's saved by Murich. Well done, the goalkeeper. Uh, good save. That would have been a good goal. It was a good save. Snapshot from Calvert-Lewin, whose first touch was impeccable. After some nice play from McNeil to find him. And by it's clapping down below us. There's an extra ball on the field as Jack Clark was open to dig a swift throw in for Ipswich Town, who had a great chance to take the lead through Jack Clark early on. Then Calvert Lewin had an opportunity for Everton when he was clean in on goal, saved by Murich. But Illiman and Dye's goal, the difference between these two sides, the Senegalese former Sheffield United player in Dye. Davis, infield towards Delap. Delap touches it into midfield and Morsey. Morsey gives it away, straight to Decore. Now in the sunshine, it's in Dye. Calvert-Lewin in a central possession, position. Right by both centre-halves. Everton work it back into their half of the field. Guy gives it to Mikalenko. Everton with uh, most of the possession, which you'd expect. Now it's with Tarkovsky. Ball at the top from him, looking for Calvert-Lewin. Again, silky first touch. Wolfenden's in the way. Everton get a fourth corner kick. Yeah, the best teams in this division, they they all seem to have that in their locker. We do with Liam de Black, but, you know, they look as if they're content with passing it around at the back, but all the time, good players are looking for that long ball. They're waiting for a striker to make a little run. You know, we've seen it with lots of teams. We've seen it today uh, with Calvert-Lewin. You know, we've seen it with most teams. Corner kick for Everton by the tunnel. It's McNeil who's going to be taking this one. They're definitely going to be a threat from set pieces such as this. They lead 1-0 Everton, and it comes to the hands of Murray. He pats it down a yard or so off his goal line, then grasps it. Yep, same thing, they like the in-swinger, they don't mind it to go swing into the goalkeeper because they've got plenty of presence in that six-yard box, Everton. Um, but that on that occasion, it was always going to be the goalkeeper's ball, but uh, they're, they're a bright team, Everton. They look as if they've, uh, they're a very confident team, and, and to be confident when you're in a very low position is very difficult. Yeah, as I said earlier on to Graham when I spoke to uh, Kathy Kegg, one of their fans, on the uh, Blue Hour last Monday, she was saying that the win over Palace had made a massive difference to them in terms of that uh, confidence and the belief and the way they've been playing. Lovely from town, forward to Hutchinson. Hutchinson, can he get into the area? No brought down by Keane, that's surely going to be a free kick and a yellow card. Absolutely. Simple decision for Michael Oliver. Town have got a free kick outside the Everton penalty area. Yeah, I mean, it's a definite... It's, it's a good little tricky run by by uh, Hutchinson but he wouldn't have got the ball because my my Michael Enko was actually coming back at a very very quick pace and had the center half not fouled him he would have picked up the ball before Amari Hutchinson so it's an expensive free kick for Everton and it's a good one to have it's on a lovely angle it's a really good angle for anybody that wants to take the free kick um, it's only two yards outside the penalty area 
Referee just doing a bit of housekeeping. Telling the uh, Everton players to get their toes behind the white line. In the 25th minute, free kick to Ipswich Town. Outside the Everton penalty area, right of centre. Just over 20 yards from goal. It's Hutchinson who hits it, hits the wall. Maybe a chance for Jack Clark. No, the ball spins away from him. He has the opportunity to recycle it from wide left outside the Everton penalty area. Back to Leif Davis. Davis pulls it back to Calvin Phillips. Can't shoot. Gives it to Hutchinson who took the original free kick. Hutchinson down the right-hand side of the area. Tries to get his cross in. It's come off to Corey who stuck to him like Olympics and Town have won their first corner. Yeah, I think the first refusal not to put the ball in by Leif Davis was a... He, he shouldn't have done it. He should have had it, put the ball in. Um, but then when we went around the box, it got to Amari Hutchinson and he got himself into a very good position. So patience was a good thing. Town have their first corner kick in the 26th minute. They trail 1-0 in from Leif Davis, headed off the near stick and out by Harrison. Comes to Calvin Phillips. Now Hutchinson gives the ball to Leif Davis, still on the right wing from taking that corner kick, the left footer. In comes his delivery, takes a deflection towards the far post, headed away by Everton, not too far. Jack Clark controls it outside the box, gets into the area. McNeil's there, not cleared by Everton, maybe a chance for Clark. Clark keeps wriggling, then he goes down inside the box. What's the referee done here? He's pointed to the spot. Penalty kick, Ipswich Town. Sean Dyche has immediately gone to the fourth official. Everton player surround Michael Oliver. He was adamant with that decision. I don't think so. Well, we have got VAR, so hold on to your hats. It's not absolutely 100% just yet, but Michael Oliver has given at the moment Ipswich Town a penalty kick. Let's wait and see. The screens have gone dead. We can't see a replay of this, but... Uh... My initial thought was he had gone into a very congested area and really wasn't going anywhere. Right, we are waiting to see what is going to develop. All eyes on the penalty area, off to our left-hand side. And Murray Hutchinson is the player with the ball at the moment. This would be Town's first penalty kick. VAR confirmation on the big screen, checking penalty for a foul be able to tell by the reaction of the crowd before we confirm what the decision is going to be but it's Hutchinson who has the ball Town scored two out of their three spot kicks last season Mari Hutchinson a goal scorer for England's under 21s in the week he's trying to get his first ever Premier League goal still we wait and as Mick said there sadly our screens went blank possibly because of these uh, IT issues at Portman Road this afternoon about five minutes ago, so uh, we're, we're not getting a close-up and personal replay of this decision, so we've seen it in real time and haven't seen it back. Is Remember, this a long time? Yeah. It seems a long time to me. It does. We had a similar situation at the Etihad earlier on this season when it took far too long for me to make the penalty decision when Savinia was upended by Davis. This one's taken nope. equally long. Right. The referee has signalled that he's going to look at the going? screen. Don't quite know where the screen is. Oh, it's popped up on the far side of the field. Bizarrely, it's not down below us. Oh, unusual. Michael Oliver has gone to the screen on the far side to have another look at this one, which tends to suggest the initial decision will be overruled. Let's hope that's not the, what happens. It's not always the way. Jordan Pickford saved a penalty last time out for Everton against Newcastle. It's a really good record for England, actually, in recent years from penalty shootouts. Here comes the decision, Michael Oliver. What's it going to be? He's checked the screen. No penalty. There's a reaction from the home crowd. Everton still lead 1-0, and Hutchinson hands the ball back to Pickford. No, it was just too too congested, wasn't it? You know, he seemed as if he hadn't sort of got himself through that congestion. And no, I agree. No, it wasn't clear cut enough. No, it wasn't. It's the right call for me looking at it on the big screen now. So uh, yeah, can't have any disagreement over that one. Pickford's still going to be booed by the Ipswich Town fans anyway. One nil, Everton lead. It's going to be a late one this game finishing. Now we've had the delayed start by 15 minutes. If you're only joining us just now, we've uh, only played 29 minutes of this game. It was a quarter past three kickoff in the end. So it was uh, the rest of the three o'clocks head towards the half time whistle. 
We've still got probably in, in game time, best part of 20 minutes to play now after that break for the VAR decision. Here is uh, Hutchinson. We certainly know who Town's penalty kick taker is this season. Delap with a handy nutmeg on halfway, then a mazy dribble, gets to the centre spot, then gives it away after so much good work. Steam on that pass out to the right hand side, but Ndai's been equally generous. After a little flick from Phillips, Morsey takes charge, goes back to Burgess. And now Leif Davis, numerous talking points in this first half. Here is uh, Hutchinson, can turn and face halfway. Thought about playing it over the top for Delap, who'd made a run forward. Clark comes in field, good play from the number 47. Has to flick the ball in field, comes off the knee of Guy. And now, eventually, Ipswich have it at centre half. 15 to go. A beautiful sunny afternoon, finally in Suffolk after a miserable old morning. And Guy, the only goal scorer so far on BBC Radio Suffolk. Here is Leif Davis, gives it back to Calvin Phillips, his Manchester City team. Not in action until they play Wolves tomorrow. Big game. Tomorrow is Liverpool-Chelsea at Anfield. Bournemouth-Arsenal is the 5.30 kick-off tonight, incidentally. Tottenham already with three points on the board this weekend. Delap on the left with his orange boots in the right-back area outside the Everton penalty box. As Phillips has the ball on halfway for town. Plays the ball up through the centre circle. O'Shea gives it to Wolfenden. First time those two have played together in the Premier League. Burgess to Morsey, back it goes to Cameron Burgess, it's all inside the Ipswich Town half of the field, there's a few Everton fans clap far side, there is Dara O'Shea, Cameron Burgess, we'll of course ask Kieran McKenna post-match about the uh, health and fitness of both Ben Johnson and uh, Jacob Greaves, as uh, Leif Davis is taken out, sandwiched between Harrison and uh, Young near side, Sean Dykes signalling that I felt that was a dive by the town left back. It was a nice control piece of play by town, it's a little bit, I think they've got to try and do this. Everton are a bright team and they're, they're really keen to sort of keep the game going, to sort of make it end to end and deny any team a lot of possession. Davis puts the ball in behind for an onside Jack Clark, chance for him to cross into the Everton area, it comes volleyed away square by Keane out near side. Actually, had a good run at the end of last season, Everton. Five wins from their last eight games to uh, stave off any threat of uh, relegation or serious threats heading into the last couple of weeks. Five wins and a draw, actually, in that uh, run of last eight last season. But a uh, stumbling start this time around. Davis throws the ball into the Everton area, headed down by Keane, cleared partially by Harrison. Uh, the ball in the end spins back rather fortunately to... Jordan Pickford, again I think the signal from Sean Deitch is for his goalkeeper to go long. Always get the impression of Pickford, very strong-willed, will do exactly what he feels is the right thing to do. Mikalenko, lobbing one up towards Calvert-Lewin, both feet high off the floor, controls the ball, brings it down, shields it away from Burns. Calvert-Lewin still got the ball, good play from him, but then he just runs out of pitch. Throw to Ipswich. Yeah, he's a good leader of the line. Yeah. We've seen a lot of good ones down here. Started with Yotta for Liverpool and Watkins has been down here. And, you know, he's a good leader of the line. He's sort of self available. He's similar to our Liam Delap. Yeah. yeah. They've got a good all round game. They really have. Hutchinson taking on Decor in the centre of the field. Doing well. Turns the ball back to Burgess. Burgess heavy pass to Jack Clark. His control actually ends up being a touchback to Burgess. Now it's Morsey who takes charge. Hutchinson's seen a bit of the ball, gives it to Burgess, demands it straight back to former Chelsea player. He was certainly keen to get his first Premier League goal of the season as soon as that penalty kick was awarded. Amari Hutchinson. O'Shea along the floor to Burns. I haven't seen him able to use his pace since that first bursting run against Mikalenko inside the first few minutes of this game when both sides had chances before Everton scored the only goal so far. And Dye strike wins the score lines 1 0 after 34 minutes. Morsey to O'Shea, just crossing shade into sunshine far side of the field. O'Shea then back in field to Wolfenden. And with plenty of the ball at the moment, but all 10 outfield players behind it for Everton. Burgess up towards Jack Clark, eventually reaches the lap instead. Now wanting to go on one of those runs of his. Young gets a touch, but it drops nicely to Leif Davis. 
twisting and turning outside the Everton area. Davis now has the ball. Back it goes to Morsey. Morsey comes in field with it along the deck, slips the pass square to O'Shea, live on BBC Radio Suffolk Sport, approaching the final five minutes of the first half. Burns on a run, trying to get his cross in, comes off Mikalenko's outstretched right leg. The throw to Ipswich. This was a nice spell for us. We're just sort of trying to get a little bit of control of the game, you know, not to make it so end to end. That's all well and good, and it's good for, for supporters, I suppose. But sometimes when you're at home, you've got to control the proceedings. Through for Town on the right hand side. The touch from Hutchinson was uh, decent enough, it would have stayed in play. Everton had to poke it out behind for a second corner to the home side. Yeah, it's a nice little opportunity for us. Let's see what they're made of. They've tested us out with uh, a number of corners uh, in this half so far, and this is a good chance for us. It's a similar thing, as usual. Six attackers versus ten outfit, uh, defensive players. So let's see what we can do. It's a good competitive game, this uh, Portman Road. Everton lead 1-0. In comes the town corner kick. The ball will not quite go back, a complete breakdown of communication between Davis and Delap. Town should have got a hold of that ball. Oh, lovely bit of skill from uh, Decore on the far side. Actually, it was Guy. Guy in behind for Calvert-Lewin. Calvert-Lewin down the left channel, the Ipswich area. The angle isn't good. Morsey's gone with him. He's happy to win a corner kick off the town captain. Well, wow, that would have been very poor from Ipswich Town, who had a chance to keep the ball in the final third. Everton almost scored on the break. Yeah, terrific break. Uh, Amari Hutchinson gets done on the... The dummy on the uh, near the halfway line that caused enough danger, and then when the run seemed to go beyond uh, Sam Morsey, you sort of feared the worst because Sam Morsey's not the quickest on a recovery. Uh, but in the end, he ushered the player to the byline, and they then settled for a corner. Didn't even try for anything else. No, he did, didn't he? Corner kick to Everton, who lead this Premier League game 1-0. 36 and a half minutes gone. In from McNeil. Wasn't the best. Has to be cleared away by Delap, which he's done. Ashley Young, former Aston Villa, Man United, into Milan player, gets a hold of it. Plays it to the left-hand side via Mikalenko. And now it's with uh, McNeil, who's clearly got licence to roam for Everton. Everton have some space far side. Decore running it towards the edge of the Ipswich area. Gives it back to McNeil, who has a go. And turned on and out behind by Calvert-Lewin. Yeah, it was a nice... Uh, they, they retrieved everything the corner was a poor one they've retrieved that situation they got themselves away down the left hand side and that ball is literally just fired in a very congested box in the hope that somebody sort of might might get on the uh, might be the first touch but it might come off a defender as well but uh, you know that just ended a little sequence of town domination O'Shea ball down the far touch line to Hutchinson 1 0 Everton live on BBC Radio Suffolk Calvin Phillips goes back to Wolfenden Wolfram gives it to Burgess, it's applauded by the crowd, Burgess to Leif Davis near side, held up on halfway, back to Burgess, Morsey wants it, across all these players, and Burgess, Morsey, Davis, all members of that League One promotion side, a couple of seasons ago, here's another one, Wes Burns, Morsey just at the top of the centre circle as we look down from our commentary position here at Portman Road, Town 1-0 down, Davis comes in field, back it goes to Wolfenden. Town had a great chance early on and then a penalty decision overturned by VAR after the referee had initially given it. Burns up in the air, headed away by Tarkovsky, but he's been fouled by Liam Delaps as Michael Oliver. And as Kieran McKenna turns and comes for a seat on the bench down below us. Yeah, Liam Delap ignored looking at the ball then and just literally ran towards the player that was going to deal with the ball that had come forward, so uh, definitely a free kick. Six and a half minutes to go until the end of the 45th minute, but the time added on. And Dai, back to Guy. Guy floats the ball to the right-hand side, Young cushions it, thought about the early cross, has held on to it, draws in Jack Clark, now with... Harrison, Harrison plays a ball into the middle, glancing header on by Burgess, did the right thing, it's out far side for a corner to Everton, their sixth of this first half. Yeah, far more diagonal balls into the opposition box, Everton, than any team I've seen this season without question, and, and they're good at it, they cause problems, 
They obviously from it win a lot of corners. Um, it's, a, it's a good ploy. Some teams do overplay. You know, they all try to be the Manchester City, um, but some of them can't really do it. You know, but this is a team that have got an identity, stick to it, and are dangerous for it. Corner kick to Everton. McNeil again on the set piece, pulls it back to Mikalenko. Tam weren't ready for that. He wants to take on Jack Clark. Then little back heel to McNeil. He floats it into a central area. Tarkovsky with a header, nodded away by Burgess. Drops down to McNeil in the D. Nice turn from him. Lovely feet from McNeil. Gives it to Keane. Keane shoots into the corner of the net. That's a fine second goal by Everton. What a finish from Michael Keane. That's one his brother Will, the striker, would have been very, very proud of. Town find themselves now 2-0 behind. Yeah, they're very dangerous from these set plays. They, if they don't win the first one, they, they make sure it's difficult for the, for the defensive team to clear it completely. They pick up loose balls and they, on that occasion they've gone down there. And that was an unbelievable finish. It really <laughs> was. was. It? I mean, I was staggered. You know, that, that actually sort of went along the top, inside of the goal, along the netting, and I thought, well, how's that gone in? Well, I was ready for it to be side netting. It was a heck of a finish from uh, Michael Keane. Has been getting a bit of grief, uh, apparently, from Everton fans of late. Have been taken with his uh, performances. Spoke to a supporter this morning that thought that uh, Jacob Bryan, a summer signing, uh, was worth a go in his place. But he smacked that into the net. It's really good feet from McNeil as part of the setup. We will actually be credited with the assist. I think it did eventually go directly from McNeil to Keane. Town 2 0 behind. Oops. Free kick wide on the left to uh, Ipswich Town. Kieran McKenna watching on silently, arms folded. Very little in the way of silence amongst the thousands that have travelled down from Merseyside for this game here this afternoon. Maybe a chance now, three and a half minutes of the first half to go for Ipswich Town to get something on the scoreboard. It's a Leif Davis free kick from 32, 33 yards out, left-footed, he puts it in Pixford box, it's a good ball. It's headed on and away from the goal by Dara O'Shea, I think it was, who made contact. Yeah, beautiful ball, I liked his run up to the ball, it had a good angle to it, I could see exactly what he was going to do, he had two things in mind hit the space between goalkeeper and the attacking line let them go and go in pursuit of it but make sure the keeper's got no chance of coming for it and soon as he delivered the keeper's immediate reaction was to go back towards his goal and from that moment onwards it, it spelt danger and we were we should have done better actually we got first touch of the ball we should have hit the target well, can Lightning strike three times? Can Ipswich Town do what both Bournemouth and Aston Villa have done and come back from trailing 2-0 to Everton to win 3-2? Beyond the realms, as Wolfenden has the ball at the back for Ipswich Town. No Premier League debut clean sheet for this man. Burgess, Ndai and Keane with the Everton goals inside the first 40 minutes of this delayed quarter past three kickoff all the noise coming from the ever two is now in the top flight of english football wolfenden to the right and burns tight to that far touch line gives it in field to morsey morsey pretty much in the center of the everton half pokes it forward to delap that side foots it back to burgess along the floor it comes to leaf davis davis in field to morsey now it's with jack clark shielding it away from Jack Harrison still has it, Clark, into the centre circle. He finds Wolfenden, 90 seconds to go in this first half. Here is Burns, O'Shea's made a, an overlapping run. Amari Hutchinson tries to shake off Idrissa Guy. It was 30 million when he left Everton to go to Paris Saint-Germain, Idrissa Guy. One of the two changes for Everton pre-match. Town brought in Wolfenden and Burgess for Johnson and uh, Greaves. Here is Sam Morsey in the centre of the field for Town. Town have got a minute of normal time at the end of this first half to maybe get a goal back. There'll be at least three, if not four, added on at the end, though. Largely for the VAR call, which went against Town, and they thought they'd want a penalty kick. There is uh, Dwight McNeil, has been in and around England squads, uh, McNeil. 
called up initially as an under-21 player to train with them a few years ago. He's a good footballer. Mikalenko down the line to Indai. Indai plays it in field to Decore. Decore then nutmegs Delap, but it might come to Jack Clark. Clark's given it to Delap. Maybe a chance for Town. Delap goes down. Maybe Hutchinson. Referee tried to play the advantage. Now he's blown the whistle as Morsey drives wide. It's a free kick to town and a, a good position late in this first half. Yeah, good position and a definite free kick, no question about that. So, you know, they've they've earned this one. It's in a good position, more central than what we've been in before, but uh, this is uh, definitely shooting sort of distance, no question. Let's have a look who's going to be fancy in this one. Doesn't seem to be Liam Delap, which really surprises me. Six minutes have added on time to be uh, played. So seven, eight minutes past four, this first half is finally going to finish. Let's finish to this game this afternoon. It's Phillips or Davis who's going to be taking this free kick. It's about five yards outside the Everton penalty area, pretty central. It's going to be one of the two former Leeds players. It's Calvin Phillips who gets it up and over the top. His former England colleague didn't have to make the save. No, straight away, you, you, as soon as you see them hit, you think over the bar. Um, it was OK, the direction was good, but the, I, I always feel the one thing you've got to do is you've got to make the goalkeeper work from those positions. Five minutes have the added on six still to play. Beautiful conditions for football here at Portman Road, listening live on BBC Radio Suffolk, Town 2 0 behind. In the latter stages of this first half. Town have actually got a little run of uh, three successive Saturday 3 p.m. kickoffs, a rarity in the Premier League. Certainly will be for town as we head towards December and January. Harrison knocked off the ball by Clark. Clark then wants to take on McNeil. Finds Hutchinson. Good play from Jack Clark there. Hutchinson might now lose out to Ashley Young, who shields the ball out of play for a throw to Everton. Despite the fact Calvin Phillips tried to uh, take a cheeky one. Darren Bond, the fourth official, was uh, quick to get in between them. It's a shenanigans. Now Tarkovsky. Right up there last season in terms of uh, aerial duels won and blocks made in the Premier League. That's pretty much his game. I remember scoring a very late goal for Brentford against Ipswich Town a few years ago. Here come Everton, nice play in midfield. McNeil to Harrison, Harrison with the ball in. Surely 3-0 would be curtains. Harrison again has the ball. Back it goes to Decore. Everton trying to get a third goal before half-time. Harrison, is he brought down by Phillips? Yes, he is. Needless free kick given away. That's what he wanted. Yeah, he did, did he? Yeah, he collected the ball and he was hoping a challenge would come in. And it came in from Phillips and uh, unnecessary in such a situation. Two and a half minutes into the uh, added six at the end of this first half. Towns three or four man wall is about to line up. McNeil over this free kick for Everton. About 23 yards from goal, right of centre. Ashley Young's also there, Everton lead 2-0, it will be Young who hits it towards the far corner, simple catch though for Aru Muric. Yeah, easy one, I mean I always believe you've got to make the goalkeeper work, but that was that absolutely straight at him, he was stood on that side of the goal as well, so nothing. Midway point to the added on six, town 2-0 down, Burgess to Demu, poor pass from Burgess, put too much on that for Leif Davis. Kieran McKenna still applauds that down below us. Gets his honorary degree on Monday, the uh, Ipswich Town manager. Thoroughly deserved for his uh, contribution to Suffolk life these last... He's not even been here three years, Kieran McKenna, which still blows my mind that it was December 2021 that he took charge of this football club. Utterly astonishing. A couple of really... Massive games for him on a personal level. Tottenham and Manchester United, for obvious reasons, coming next month. This afternoon, though, he and his team have got their work cut out to try and get something out of uh, Everton. Otherwise, like Liverpool on the opening day, they'll be heading back to Merseyside with all three points. There is Luke Wolfenden, back in the side and in the centre circle. Gives it to Morsey. There is that uh, Wolfenden again, along the deck, finding Burns. Just that strip. The length of the pitch, far side of Sunshine, the rest of it 
90% now in shade as we head into the final two minutes of this uh, extended and delayed first half. Morsey. Second halves will be getting underway elsewhere in the three o'clock kickoffs. Wasted pass forward from Burgess out behind. A chance for Pickford, no doubt, and he is a master at this to waste a bit of time. Yes, it's been difficult for Cameron Burgess. He's been plunged in, you know, he hasn't really sort of had any chance whatsoever to, to get to know what the Premiership's all about, and he's just feeling it a little bit, I think. You know, he's, he's normally so good on the ball, he seems to always have enough options uh, to keep it, keep possession of it, and sometimes play a very dangerous ball as well, but he's struggling a little bit today. Phillips loses the ball, then those ran the risk of diving in there, I feared the worst, but he didn't. Kept his cool, guys dragged to the ground by Morsey. Free kick on the centre spot, pretty much. But uh, Everton have, Decore is over the ball, slips it to his mate in midfield, Idrissa Guy. On that far touch on Mikolenko, the left back of Everton, one of their two changes pre-match. Michael Keane, a goal scorer. Goes to Tarkovsky near side. Second goal of the season, that for uh, Michael Keane. Not sure his first one was as good a finish. Phillips receives the ball from Davis. Tans to Levitt and left back. Uh, very close to the dead ball line. Cleared forward by Ipswich. Won by Everton. McNeil's done well to find Harrison. In dives Davis. McNeil now has the ball. Shields it away from Jack Clark. Out it goes. Throw for Everton inside the town half of the field. According to my watch, that's it for the uh, six minutes. And uh, the referee agrees. He points towards the tunnel, blows his whistle for the final time in this uh, first period. And it's uh, Everton who have a 2-0 lead over Ipswich Town, McMills. Yes, and you've got to you've got to admit that they deserve it. There's no question about it. They've had the best chances in the game. They've had uh, they've been very adventurous. I mean, they must have been playing like this before because how many times this season have they raced into leads? You know, and it's something that nobody has given credit for. You know, the, there's always been this tremendous amount of criticism about, about Everton. The fact that by the end of the game, they've conceded leads and lost matches, you know. But, but nobody has spoken about how they play well from the start of a game, uh, create enough chances to take the leads that they've squandered in the past. So they've carried on, really, where their season's been at the moment. We've just got to hope that they haven't had so many chances to sort of think and work on how do you keep a lead when you gain it because you know we want to be we want to think that when we come out second half that we're going to play against that team that folds up in the second half and gives you a chance let's hope that is the case but on the evidence of the first half Everton are a decent team first of all they look very very confident uh, they had a lot of bounce about them, they had a lot of sort of desire, a lot of uh, confidence about playing the ball around, keeping possession and then hitting the big one, whether it's cross field or through the middle to Calvert-Lewin. You know, they had a whole range uh, in their armour and they looked them, to me as, a, as if they were a good side, a confident side and areas. But it's this ability to get the ball out wide and put dangerous balls in the box early and from sort of diagonal positions, positions about 25, 30 yards from the byline. They don't waste the time at trying to get to the byline all the time because that's really difficult. That They obviously believe heavily in the fact that if they're given an opportunity to get that ball in the box, let it go in there, fight for the first one, make sure you press the second one, and they're pretty good at it. So then, then there are, they're a decent team. Uh, I don't know whether it's a false position or not, but they're a decent team on the evidence of this today. We haven't really got ourselves going. You know, we, we uh, had the really good chance uh, for Jack Clark early on, which should have gone in, but then they've had an equally good chance with Calvert-Lewin, so you could rule that out. Um, we had the possibility of a penalty. I didn't think it was a penalty, and that was proven by VAR. But generally speaking, I think Dara O'Shea is playing 
the right back position like a centre half. He wants to stay in position all the time. He offers nothing going forward. I've only seen him go on one run to to help Wes Burns out. You know, and and you've got to have that in your locker room if you're going to play there. You've got to be able to take care of the defensive side of it, like Leif Davis is doing this season. Take care of the defensive side, and then offer some assistance in the attacking half. At the moment, he hasn't done it. Uh, Luke Wolfenden and Cameron Burgess are finding it difficult against uh, Calvert-Lewin. Um, so they've got to pick their game up. It's just generally all over the pitch. I haven't seen one individual of ours or one pairing of ours that is actually causing their opponents' problems. I think Everton, generally speaking, are winning all the one-to-ones. They're winning all the uh, pairings as well. And that's why they're 2-0 in front. We have definitely got to improve our game and hope that we're going to meet the Everton in the second half that a number of teams have already met where they fold and they concede leads. Yeah, the next goal in this game is a uh, huge. Whatever happens in the uh, delayed second half, we'll hear it live on BBC Radio Suffolk. But so far at the midway stage, it's Everton who lead this game by two goals to nil. Just gone ten past four. You're with Match Day elsewhere in the Premier League. Tottenham come from behind to beat West Ham four-one in the lunchtime kickoff. Kudos uh, giving West Ham the lead on 18 minutes. Kulusevski levelling for Ange Postecoglou's side just before half time. Second half goals from Basuma, a Tadebo own goal, and Sun. Hoing Min. We'll hear from uh, Ange Postacoglu during our halftime roundup. Second half's underway elsewhere in the Premier League this afternoon. It's uh, Fulham 1, Aston Villa 1 at Craven Cottage. Raul Jimenez opening the scoring for the home side on five minutes. Morgan Rogers levelling inside the opening ten minutes. Uh, there's been uh, a goal at Old Trafford in the last few moments. It's an equalising goal for Manchester United. Garnacho with it. Ethan Pinnock with a free kick. Brentford a half-time lead. Newcastle trailing at home to uh, Brighton. Danny Welbeck with the only goal of the game so far. That would move Brighton up to uh, fourth in the Premier League table if they can win uh, this afternoon. And Southampton leading Leicester by two goals to nil at St Mary's. Cameron Archer on eight minutes. Uh, Joe Aribo on 28. So Southampton, as things stand on course for their first win of the season. Bournemouth v Arsenal is the evening kickoff in the Premier League. In the Championship, Stoke 1, Norwich 1, second half underway in League 1. Cambridge United are two goals for the good at home to Wigan. In League 2, Colchester trailing 2-1 at home to Cheltenham. Round the grounds locally, uh, Needham Market trailing 2-0 at home to Kidderminster Harriers in the National League North. In the Southern Premier League Central Division, Joe Neal with the equaliser for AFC Sudbury. They're 1-1 away at Kettering. Jamal Lotta has been on target for Leyston. They're 1-1 at Redditch and Lowestoft Town leads Stratford Town by a goal to nil. Carl Haylock with the only goal of the game so far. Into the Isthmian North Division. Top of the table, Berry Town one up away at Haybridge Swifts. Luke Brown with the only goal of the game. Grays Athletic lead Ipswich Wanderers 1-0 at Mildenhall Town and Tilbury a goalless. Uh, last we heard Newmarket Town were trailing 1-0 at Whittam Town and Nick Garnham has seen a few goals this afternoon at the Martello Ground. He's watching Felix Stone Walton United playing Walthamstow. It's Felix Stone Walton United 2 and Walthamstow 1. And after three goals in the space of five first half minutes, it's the Seasiders who lead here with 52 minutes played so far. Felix Stone opened the scoring in the 20th minute. Josh Hitter's left wing corner was flicked on at the near post by Noel Aikens and hit the base of the far post before falling to Josh May, who, who made no mistake from close range. However, Wolf and Stowe were level just two minutes later when the home defence failed to clear a left-wing free kick and Teo Oibola stabbed home from close range. The Seasiders regained the lead in the 25th minute, hit a low to Lewis Green's left after Geordie Matthews had been upended in the box by Kevin Segolo. Late the score with 53 minutes now played at the Martello ground. It's Felix Don Walton United 2, Walton Stowe 1.
Thanks, Nick. We've got four Suffolk sides in FA Vars first round action this afternoon. Brantham Athletic leading 1-0 away at Downham Town. Hadley United trailing 1-0 at home to London Lions. Cornard three down away at Thetford this afternoon. Uh, Luke Himes, Woodbridge Town are level at 1-1 with Takeley. Uh, we'll be back with Brenna William McMills for full second half commentary of Ipswich Town versus Everton shortly on BBC Radio Suffolk. It's the uh, away side leading 2-0 at Portman Road in our main feature this afternoon. Uh, as I mentioned, Tottenham winning the uh, first of today's Premier League fixtures, coming from behind to see off West Ham by four goals to one. Uh, let's hear it from the Spurs boss, Ange Postacoglu. Yeah, we had to fight hard in the first half. You know, obviously, going goal down wasn't ideal, but we sort of clawed our way back into the game. It's not easy. You know, they're, they're a big physical side. They've got some speed as well. Um, so we had to kind of match that. But uh, I thought second half we were outstanding. We, we, we really sort of uh, up the tempo and... You know, played some quality football, you know, defended when we needed to um, and, you know, got our finishing right, especially through that spell when we had the dominance. What was your overriding message to them at half-time to change things? It's not about changing things. Like I said, we're kind of knew, you, you know, there'd been an arm wrestle and, as I've always said, we'll back ourselves that, you know, we'll keep going at the intensity we always do and, um, you yeah, know, it was just more... Of, by continuing in that and if we could up it a little bit you know just take the game to them even more and put them under more pressure uh, particularly here at home that you know eventually we'd break them and the assumption that it was a tactical change you feel that perhaps Sar made the difference that you needed the control that you needed in there not just him but you know yeah i just felt that we needed a little bit more running power in that midfield and uh, pape's got bags of that uh, yeah he's got bags of energy and uh, i thought he really helped us just uh, get control of that midfield uh, you know you, you have to defend against west ham because they've got like I said, some big physical guys in there and uh, yeah that gave us a good platform then for for us going forward but I, I just thought our general play you know really improved from there and um yeah we look really dangerous going forward Ange Postacoglu speaking after Tottenham 4, West Ham 1 earlier today. Uh, some brilliant news from the Ipswich Town women's camp ahead of tomorrow's National League Cup fixture with hashtag United in Felix. So the Tractor Girls record goal scorer and record appearance maker Natasha Thomas could be in line to make a bit more club history. The 28-year-old has been selected to join the Jamaican women's senior squad for forthcoming internationals. If she plays, she'll become the first Ipswich Town women's player to win a senior international cap. It's still one of those uh, moments where um, it's not sunk in. Um, of course, I'm sure it will sink in when I'm on the flight um, to go and play and go into the camp. But yeah, um, it's just something, I know I keep saying it, but I never dreamt of it. Of course, it was a goal and a dream when I was younger, but they always say if you don't make the dreams, it can't come true. So make sure you are making those dreams. But yeah, no, the support of Rachel, to be honest, and the club itself and Joe to help and ensure that my name was out there. Um, I think that really helped. And again, obviously me just keep on pushing on in my football, not not looking back and dwelling on things. I think it's all just come at the right time. And me and myself and my family are just so happy that I've managed to get the call up and hopefully there's many call ups after this. When you've <laughs> when you've had time to let it sink in, you've got a game to play on Sunday. Yep, we have. So and I'm just gonna ensure that I'm all for the game here at Ipswich, who we have on this weekend in the cup. So I think that's a good start, a good ball rolling for me. And then I'll be flying on Monday. So again I'll then come back and make sure that I'm all eyes on it switch but for now um, and after the game I think it's going to be um, a bit of a difference for me and hopefully I'll be able to in, in devour that and um, look for and lastly Tash you've got a plane journey so what are you doing on the plane have you got a series downloaded what's the plan I think I think I'll download a series I'll get my music up to date um, <laughs> <laughs> and then I think I'll just have a little chill and um, to be honest and soak it all up soak all the atmosphere up and what's to come so yeah no I am really looking forward to it of course I'm nervous but at the same time it's a massive opportunity for me and I can't wait to grab it with both hands plain food though gross yeah We'll see. It might be nice. You never know. I'll take a little pack up. <laughs> <laughs> Natasha Thomas, congratulations to her with Connor Bennett this week. The Ipswich Town women's striker speaking about news of that senior international call-up with Jamaica. We wish her all the best with that. bit more from Natasha in yesterday evening's Match Day preview programme. If you want to catch up with that on BBC Sounds and Connor's penned an article about her feet for the web as well. If you search BBC Suffolk News. Also a piece on our website today about first pro boxing night in Ipswich for five years. Uh, the delayed start at Portman Road means uh, we hope to bring you news of that during 
think uh, the final hour of match day this afternoon, but that is uh, is touch and go. But if we have time for a bit of boxing in the final half hour of today's program. We will bring it to you. Uh, another goal at the Ecologic Stadium, Bloomfields, and it's another away goal. I'm afraid to need a market nil. Kidderminster Harriers three, the latest score in that National League North fixture. Just away from football, Barry St Edmunds rugby players are targeting a third straight National League win this afternoon. They're going the right way about it. They led by 29 points to 10 against Worthing at the Haberdon a uh, short while ago. Barry still unbeaten at home this season. It's just women's basketball players back at home today. The Suffolk side. University at Copleston, one win and one defeat so far for both teams in Division 1. This evening from 6, Ipswich men tip off away at Richmond Knights in Division 2. Uh, Ipswich men still looking for that first league win of the season, three games in. At the USA Grand Prix, Max Verstappen will start on pole position for this evening's sprint race. 52 points separating him and McLaren's Lando Norris in the title race. Norris starts fourth. In racing, Champions Day at Ascot today, four Group 1 races, the James Fan your trained kind of blue won the champions sprint stakes the favorite Kalpana took the champions fillies and mers stakes likewise it was the favorite who won the queen elizabeth the second stakes at 315 charin taken that for new market trainer roger varian at the 355 champion stakes was won by Anmat for owen burrows well two nil's been a, a tricky score line for everton at times this season hopefully it's still the case today we'll be back with brenna woolley and mcmills in just a moment friday evenings from seven with angel Joseph. It's really important to us that we tell you what's going on in the community as well as linking up different people, different events, different community kind of heroes, really. I learned a lot from you last time about water safety as well. Make a lot of noise, but do not jump in and try and save them because more times than not, when you jump in, that person will see you as a lifeline yeah. and more times than not, they will go down with you. I think October is the month for this country. Oh, great, because that's my birthday month. So it's, birthday it's month. good to hear it's that. It's Black History Month. Yeah. It's the Goldilocks month. It's perfect. BBC Radio Suffolk. You are with Match Day. Just gone 20 past four. A delayed start to our main feature this afternoon. It's just Town versus Everton. Town have it all to do if they're to get anything out of this one. Let's go back to Portman Road and rejoin Mick Mills and first Brenner Woolley. Uh, no changes in terms of the uh, 22 starters. So Town have got Murich in the goal off to our left. It's a rarity. Town playing from left to right in this second half. O'Shea, Wolfenden, Burgess and Davis in the back four. That's Morsey and Phillips. Then it's Burns, Hutchinson, Clark. Jack Clark, that is. Delap up top. On the bench, Walton, Harry Clark. Townsend, Taylor, Chaplin, Ogbeni, Smoddix, Broadhead, Hurst. At Pickford in all line is off to our right. The Everton goalkeeper, his back four. Young, Tarkovsky, the captain. Keener, goal scorer. And also on the yellow card, McLean. Then it's Guy alongside Decore, Harrison McNeil and Dai in Dai who made it 1-0. And Calvert-Lewin who should have scored early on in this game but has led the line well for Everton. On the bench, Virginia and Begovic, both keepers. Patterson, Mangala, Beto O'Brien, Coleman, Armstrong and Dixon. Jared Branthwaite, uh, not well enough, not fit enough should I say, to uh, resume this season. He's been out a few weeks now, very highly rated centre-half uh, of Everton. Might be their most prized asset with former Carlisle player not involved at the moment. Haven't overly missed him with the lead 2 0. Pickford with a long ball forward early in the second half. Burgess, the back header. Davis prevents it, going out for a corner. He did well. Touched down there by Decore. Intercepted by Jack Clark. Morsey behind Burns. Hutchinson will get on the ball. Look, chased, hunted down by Indai. Hutchinson still on it. Gives it away, though. Straight to Guy, who read the situation well. Was it just the correct position to win that ball when it became loose now Keen that was a fine finish from him to put his side 2-0 ahead Mikalenko beaten for pace once early on in that first half by Burns but then didn't have an awful lot to do against the wide man forward from Pickford nicely floated ball controlled on the right thigh of Adrissa Guy in comes O'Shea out goes the ball throw in to Everton, who will know a third goal will be an absolute killer. Sean Dyche probably hasn't had to remind his players of Bournemouth and Villa. They'll know about it themselves. There is Ashley Young. Just rolls the ball back to Tarkovsky. Into midfield from him and uh, Decore. Very experienced player, Decore, now 31 years of age. Playing alongside Guy, who's uh, 35 in there. Wouldn't be a big surprise if Mangala comes on at some stage, the Belgian who was playing for his country in the international break, Mangala. 
now it's with Ducore. Battles the ball to this left side, and Mikalenko in die stumbles out of play under pressure from O'Shea, but legal pressure, says the referee. Hutchinson for Ipswich Town, one back by Guy, then he tugs at his shirt blatantly. Good advantage played by the referee. Everton on the charge. McNeil, a dangerous player, into the box to Harrison. Pulls it back, looking for McNeil, not enough. And in steps Burgess, that was a real chance for Everton to probably put this game to bed. As it is, Jack Clark carries it away for town. Clark gets to halfway, then loses it to Decore. Covers a lot of ground, those long legs of his, Abdullah Decore. Yeah, it was an amazing advantage the referee gave them there. It was correct, but you don't see many referees give an advantage to them like that. And that, that helped Everton to build a really serious attack. Town in this run of fixtures at the moment, the reverse fixtures are their last four games of the season, playing the likes of West Ham, Everton, Brentford and Leicester. Weeks time we're at Brentford, first visit to a new ground for uh, Ipswich Town, long gone are the days of uh, Griffin Park. Town's next home game is against Leicester here in a fortnight. <laughs> uh, then eight days after that, we are at Tottenham for the uh, final game before the uh, next international break. And of course, a, a long, proud home record here. Just the one defeat in the last 24 here in the league. That was to Liverpool on the opening day of the season. Long kick from Pickford, brought down by Indai, trying to thread it through to Calvert Lewin. The loose ball breaks to McNeil, trying to take on Phillips. He's got away from him. McNeil, good play from him to Harrison inside the area. Harrison's cross to the middle, straight into the hands of Aru Muric. Yeah. The crowd have responded just as I was going to speak, and quite rightly so. We need a bit more, we really do. You know, Everton are actually dominating the possession and, and looking comfortable again. Town never gone eight games at the start of a top flight season without a win. Clearly, staring down the barrel of that happening here this afternoon at 2-0. Uh, Actually had a good record against uh, Everton when they last uh, met many moons ago now, of course. I'm beaten in the last four, actually, Town. Three wins and a draw. In fact, Joe Royal was the last Everton manager to take three points off Ipswich Town. He's managed both of these clubs, Joe Royal. De Lapp to Clark. Clark, edge of the box, tries to cross the ball. Hits the backside of an Everton defender. Out as far as Phillips. Phillips gives it away to Guy. Guy up towards Calvert-Lewin. Burns has gone after him, Burns dives in there, he's shrugged off by Calvert-Lewin, might have to go it alone, get support in the centre, Morsey steps in, even he can't get a hold of the ball, Calvert-Lewin into the middle, well defended, heading towards his own goal line by Cameron Burgess, the crowd reacts, Everton on top, the better side, they lead 2-0, Harrison inside the box, square to the middle, down goes Murich and saves it, Town needs to liven up. Yeah, they do, they really do. We, we had a pretty good attack going there. We saw Leif Davis doing what he can do, tack down the left-hand side. He brought Liam Delap into the game, then Jack Clark came into the game. Everything looked so promising, and then we make big mistakes, and we look all exposed at the back. Look at a bit of play from Hutchinson there on halfway. In between a couple of players under pressure, received the ball well from Burns and kept it with the Blues. Burns gives it away, straight to Keane. There is uh, Decore, important player for Everton in the engine room. Young, good ball down the line to Harrison, goal side of Davis. Davis comes back, Harrison wants to take him on, Harrison beats him inside the area. Harrison with a cross, headed up by Burgess in the right place at the right time, nodded away by Morsey. Clark's on the ball, tries to get it through the legs of Decore, Everton win it back. Young to the right-hand side, they're definitely trying for this third goal. And surely it's curtains. Town losing by three a couple of weeks ago down at uh, West Ham. Everton have won 3 0 here twice in the past. Never won by more on this ground. Here is McNeil. Good play from him. I've liked him this afternoon. Decore might fancy a dig from outside the box. Dinks it into the area. Calvert Lewin. Nice control. And then his shot is just wide of the post. But warning signs are there. Yeah. Look at this at the moment. Everton by far the more likely to get the third goal of this game. Too comfortable. They're performing well. They're performing with a high degree of confidence. We are we look a bit disillusioned. We need now, I think, wholesale changes. I don't yeah. think this group are going to bring this game back. Clark's been sent out, that's Harry Clark, so two Taylor, so two Ogbeni. Those two minutes for Ireland in the week, Jack Taylor's debut, which was uh, well-deserved, played well as well in his uh, cameo appearance in their latest defeat. 
Long from O'Shea towards Delap. Tarkovsky deals with him. Chested down by Hutchinson. Here is uh, Guy. Back towards Mikolenko. Guy uh, again. Now it's uh, Michael Keane inside his penalty box. Disguised pass towards Mikolenko. Now with Keane once more, he fires a right footed ball to the far side, controlled by Young. Young keeps it in, gives it to Harrison. Challenged by Davis, still tangling on the far side, holding on to each other. Miles away from the ball, the pair of them. The ball's underneath us. The uh, Everton left in Dai, the number 10. Getting in field, gives it towards Harrison. He's tripped by Phillips. Scruffy challenge that from the Man City man. Harrison's very lively. Interesting backstory. Birkenhead born, had a bit of time as an academy kid up with Liverpool and Manchester United. Went to New York, Harrison, signed by Manchester City. Then became a Leeds player, now uh, on loan here for the second season in a row. It's the number seven, McNeil, standing over this free kick for Everton. Too far out for a shot. Plays it square to Guy. Guy in a central position inside the town half. Gives it back towards McNeil. He prods it in field to Indai. Good feet from Indai, but then steps Phillips. It's got enough on the challenge to see the ball cannon to the halfway line. Almost given away by Everton. Delap battles with Young. Young got the better of that challenge. In goes Phillips, but it will be Harrison who gets on the ball far side. Chopped down by Phillips. He might run with that. That's all right. Out for a throw. We'll hear from... Um, Kieran McKenna and hopefully uh, an Ipswich Town player as well before off air at six but because of the delayed start and the extended first half that might not be on air until Monday's blue hour with myself between six and seven this uh, coming Monday night your thoughts welcome after full time as well 0800 141 2121 here's the phone number text 81333 Start those messages, SFK. Also start SFK on your WhatsApps. That's 08,000-321-333. Mistake from O'Shea. That could be vital. Here come Everton. With die he shoots saved by Murich. And then he gathers it at the second attempt. Another mistake from town at the back. Let's go back to Graham. Fulham, Man United lead Brentford 2-1. Leicester have got one back against Southampton. It's now 2-2, Leicester. Oh. Interesting. Massive game, that, uh, on the south coast. Leicester, the next team here in a fortnight. Look, Wolfenden for Ipswich, still trailing 2-0 on BBC Radio Suffolk. If you want to get in touch with me on the blue, I have those numbers that I just read out, and also email brenner at bbc.co.uk, B-R-E-N-N-E-R at bbc.co.uk. Special blue are coming up two weeks on Monday, which I'll tell you about on uh, Monday night. Forward from Hutchinson, headed away by Keane at centre-half for Everton. There is Ducore. Now with Guy. Guy goes between a couple of challenges. He's fouled. Again, the referee plays an advantage. It was a trip by the now apologetic Hutchinson. Ashley Young gives it to uh, McNeil. It's actually done a rise at right back, Young. Oh, good play from McNeil again. He does look a nice footballer. Very elegant. Running forward with the ball. Puts it in behind for Harrison. Harrison's first time cross is dealt with by Wolf and then back towards Harrison inside the area. <laughs> and just hacked away by Burgess. Nice first touch by Young, which you would expect. The lap leans into him. Harrison has the ball. Seen a lot of it at the moment, Jack Harrison. Blocked off by Phillips effectively. The lap comes in field. He's robbed by Decore. Free kick given the way of Ipswich Town, but I agree, Mick, in terms of changes, something's got to, to alter for Town. And they've got five subs out at the moment. Will he go over the whole lot, I wonder? Well, you know, it wouldn't do any harm. I think he'd probably keep one back, maybe. But, uh, you know, certainly, you know, the minimum would be three. They'll be looking to do four, really, just to change the whole face of things. Here is at Morsey. Bombing forward from midfield, gives it up to Delap. Yeah, understandably, Kieran McKenna would want to keep one back just in case there's an injury. Still a long way to go in this game. McNeil on a run. Burgess gets across him and gives it back to Murch. Murch should get there. Otherwise, it would have been a shocker of a corner to have given away. Yeah, next Saturday, Mick will be alongside me in West London when uh, Brentford host Ipswich Town. For the moment, though, Town 2-0 um, behind. Going to Everton, Everton's first away win of the season, this would be. Burns, robbed by Indai. Indai gives it back to uh, Pickford. Pickford books the ball up towards Calvert-Lewin. Wolfenden gets the better of him, then Phillips. 
to the centre circle. Phillips out to the left-hand side. Delap's going to go after that one and keep it in play. Tarkovsky battling with him. Delap's done well. Infield towards Hutchinson. Hutchinson turns it on. He's unlucky. And the crowd react to that. They know that uh, the idea was right. Well, we're just getting close to the last 30 minutes of the game and I, I did a little thing before the game that Everton have not scored a goal this season in the last 30 minutes of a game and they've conceded 50% of their goals in the last 30 minutes, so there's hope yet. Yes, like Michalenko, oh, it's 2-0, and we know what Ipswich Town are like. In terms of their personality, their spirit, they'll keep going right till the death. And far from one as far as Everton are concerned. Calvert-Lewin on the right-hand side, needs support, gets it from Guy. Guy slips a pass short to his right-hand side, Harrison, infield towards Calvert-Lewin, and steps Burgess. Phillips gives it to Morsey, Morsey then finds Hutchinson, Hutchinson behind Burns, Town can't get over halfway. Chaplin about to come on for Town, Harry Clark's about to make his Premier League debut. Here come the changes, interesting ones. Phillips on the centre spot. He gives the ball to Burgess, back to Phillips. Just missed the start of the season after having surgery in the summer. Harry Clark's been fit for a few weeks now. Opportunity for uh, him. There is O'Shea to Burns on the right-hand side. Burns tries to play a cross in. Charged down by Indy. Town win the first corner of the second half. Yeah, and Wes Burns has just tried to do what Everton have been doing all the game, is hit a diagonal ball into the box, and he wins a corner with it, so, you know, not a bad thing to try. This is our little chance to maybe get a goal back, you know. The, uh, Leif Davis is good, I think he's better when he, with his corners on this side of the pitch, and uh, a nice in-swinger, a lot of pressure on Pickford, anything can happen. Uh, worth emphasising if you join us just after 25 to 5. There's still half an hour plus of this game to go. We're only 14 minutes into the second half to the delayed start. Approaching the hour mark, live on BBC Radio Suffolk Sport. Everton lead 2 0 at Portman Road. But Tan have a corner kick off to our right hand side. In comes the delivery from Davis, missed by Pickford. At as far as Phillips. Phillips delivers right footed into the mix, headed up by Burgess. Other players challenge for it, but it's Tarkovsky who used his body well. And let the ball effectively roll down his forehead to Pickford. Looks like it's just going to be that double change, Chaplin and Clark. Oh, and dies in the space vacated by Davis. Little ball to Calvert Lewin. Calvert Lewin goes round the goalkeeper. He's on the deck. Hutchison's there. Murich is back in his six yard area. Just couldn't find the angle to hit the back of the net, Calvert Lewin. And well, it's I'm glad he never tried because I thought he should have done. He's, he's rounded everybody he needed to go round. And, and then you're expecting him to. You know, across the goalkeeper into the far corner, but he, he tried to be too clever, I think. Yeah, you're right. And there was an opportunity there, but then it disappeared. And all he could hope for was a corner, which is uh, what he got. McNeil rolls the corner kick back towards Young. Nobody spotted that in blue. Young in the right corner of the Ipswich area. Plays it forward to McNeil inside the box. McNeil shoots into the waiting grasp of Murich. Yeah. They've walked the ball in from the corner click situation and they've got the sales a free hit, but that's a nice, comfortable save from Murich. Taking a long time with the subs. Yeah, they are still waiting, the two of them. Number 10, Chaplin, number 2, Clark. Here is um, Wolfendom. Remember who's going to be at the players coming off. Up to the far side, it's with uh, Burgess. Phillips. To Burgess. Now Jack Clark infield finding at Morsey. Burgess forward to Clark once again. Clark goes on a run infield, gets away from the first couple of players. He's, a, he's about to be challenged by McNeely, released the ball back to Burgess. Morsey. In the second half, no further goals in this second half. Everton lead 2 0. Davis crosses into the Everton box, headed away by Keane. Loaded up by O'Shea in an attacking area, brought down by McNeil, won back by uh, O'Shea, who now finds himself an open play on the far side, in the left wing area, the right back. Phillips to the right and Burns, one-on-one -on -one with Mikolenko. What can the Welshman do? Comes in field, Burns, left-footed, crosses into the centre. Comfortable header away from Keane, stooping to meet the ball. Calvert-Loom with a couple of keepy-uppy touches. 
keeps it in on the near side. Oh, then turns away from Burns. Lovely play by the England striker. And plays it infield to Decore. He gives it to McNeil. Nice play from Everton. McNeil with a pass, lays it out to the far side. And Harrison, this would be a good goal if Everton can convert. It's Harrison inside the area. Good challenge from Davis. Well defended by the left back, applauded by those standing off the bench below us. Yeah, super move, sweeping move from left back right the way to the uh, wide right position. I thought that Ashley Young could have gone on an overlap, but he turned that down. It was uh, probably 30 yards too much for him. Here come the changes for Ipswich Town. Wes Burns is the first player going off, being replaced by Connor Chaplin. So Mari Hutchinson will go to the right. Chaplin in the middle, and the other changes like for like. Clark, Harry Clark makes his Premier League debut. He's on a right back for Dara O'Shea. Yeah, just trying something. We've got a, we've got a new partnership down this right hand side. That that's a good thing because that's not just a one for one change. That's changing. The complete right-hand side of your team now. Now Clark and Hutchinson might just have a little bit more in their locker uh, than what Burns and Oche O'Shea had as a pair. Getting the old band together this afternoon. Chaplin playing, Harry Clark, Wolfenden, Burgess, Morsey, Davis. It's uh, League One promotion, Championship promotion. Morsey to Hutchinson, Hutchinson to Delap, wide right outside the Everton box, Delap comes in field on his left-hand side, might fancy a go, he does, blocked by Everton, then cleared away, only as far as Calvin Phillips, the crowd want him to shoot, he plays it to Harry Clark, just on as a sub down this right-hand side, Clark to Phillips, then Hutchinson, Hutchinson on the right, outside the Everton box, Town looking to get a foothold in this game, trailing 2-0, Phillips, Chaplin wants it in the middle, so to Delap, awful delivery, out far side, Goal kick to Everton. Well, these two have looked lively together straight away down this side. Clark, Clark is going to give you so much more running sort of power and willingness down this side. As I said, Darrow O'Shea, good centre half, but when he goes into the right back position, he wants to stay in the hole all the time and not sort of go bursting up the right hand side. Clark will give you that running ability. Hutchinson now will give you a lot more sort of variation on this right hand side. Guy up to the halfway line for Everton, still full of running in midfield. Harrison, who's seen a lot of the ball in the second half, has it over in the far left corner as we look at things. The Everton right, infield to McNeil. He lays it off back to Guy, infield to Ducore, slightly miscontrolled it. Gave Morsey a hint of an opportunity to nick it off of him. But Ducore kept possession for the cream shirts of Everton, who are playing from right to left for the remainder of this game. 26 minutes to go. Everton win the ball in midfield, Mikolenko gives it back to uh, Keane, uh, visiting supporters will be quietly confident that this is going to be victory number two uh, of the season. And a little run after this, they've got Fulham at home, Southampton away, West Ham away, Brentford at home, so maybe an opportunity to build on what would be four unbeaten, unless they now concede three here. That's a decent little run they've got themselves on all of a sudden. Jordan Pickford outside his area, gives it to Keane, first time down the line to Mikolenko. Morsey tries to cut out his route to halfway. Decore to Ashley Young. And it's with that uh, Harrison. And yet to throw on some real pace up against Young in this game. When Everton played Luton last season, Bennett gave him a torrid time. Uh, Ashley Young has yet to face that kind of pace so far in this game up against Jack Clark. Morsey picks out a good pass to Chaplin. Chaplin then looks towards Hutchinson on the right-hand side. Good challenge by Mikolenko, which takes both Clark and Hutchinson out of the game. Infield to Dwight McNeil. Clark comes back. Uh, that was a poor pass from McNeil. First thing he's done badly this afternoon, out of play town through. Well, that was handy because that could have been an expensive dribble by Amari Hutchinson because as he decided to take uh, Mylachenko on, Harry Clark was coming like a train to make an overlap and make an option for him and it was just a, a bad decision at a bad time. They both went out of the game and they looked, they looked vulnerable. Clark. To the right hand side looking for Hutchinson. He takes the ball on his chest back to Clark. He has a back four of Clark, Wolfenden, Burgess, and Davis for Ipswich Town now. <laughs> Clark in field, taken down high on the chest by Phillips with a bit of room in which to roam. He plays it along the floor to Davis. Still Everton lead 2 0, approaching the midway point of the second half. 
given away by Davis to Young. Young's clearance is deflected. The header by Davis finds Dwight McNeil. McNeil holds on to the ball far side. And now it's with Guy to Ducore. McNeil finds Young. And back the ball goes to Tarkovsky inside his penalty area, all the way to Pickford, closed down by Delap. He piles into Pickford. Well, I'd like to think there'll be England colleagues in the future. Uh, Delap knocks Pickford to the ground. Pickford happy enough with that. Big grin on his face. This will waste a bit more time. And that's a free kick to Everton by the byline. Michael Oliver just having a word with uh, Liam Delap uh, about that one. Yeah, get in touch afterwards on BBC Radio Suffolk. Call 0800 141 2121 to have a chat with Graham and Mick. Or text 81333, start those messages, SFK. Or WhatsApp 08000 321 333 again, starting those with uh, SFK. Many town thoughts later on today or throughout the week. If you want to email them to me, uh, brenner at bbc.co.uk. Lovely to uh, be in touch with you in some way, shape or form every Monday night between 6 and 7. On the blue hour, Morsey hangs the ball up in the air, looking for Delap, headed down and out far side by Tarkovsky. Quickly taken through by Delap. Can Calvin Phillips carry it on? No, he can't. Tarkovsky got his body in the way, and the ball is back with Jordan Pickford. Well, a lovely run by Liam Delap and uh, super ball from Sam Morsey. And uh, you know we need more of that. But we've had, we're having a reasonable spell. We haven't really posed. Everton serious problems, but we're having most of the ball territorially. It's normally in the Everton half. Uh, Everton look okay on the breakaway, uh, but they're doing more defending in this half than they did in the first half. But we haven't really seriously damaged them. Smodix and Taylor, two more of the uh, Irish contingent, about to come on for uh, Ipswich Town, who trail this game 2 0. But you're not tuning in for the final few minutes just yet. There are still 21 minutes to go in this game because of the uh, delayed start. On the halfway line, Wolfenden gives the ball to Phillips. No goals in the second half. All damage done in the first 40. Goes out far side for a throw into Ipswich, which should allow this uh, double change to be made. Quickly back in play though. Phillips with a diagonal to the right-hand side. Hutchinson, one-on-one -on -one with Ndai, back defending for Everton. Hutchinson takes him on, gets into the box, low ball into the middle. Uh, touched away, out for a throw to Ipswich Sam, very close to the corner flag. Yeah, super play by Amari Hutchinson there. He's, uh, he had the beating of his fullback there. Here come the changes. Uh, Smodix coming on for uh, Jack Clark. Spurned that very op early opportunity to put one town one nil ahead. Uh, Jack Clark and the uh, other alteration is that uh, Phillips going off to be replaced by Jack Taylor which is uh, understandable with that uh, town needing a goal it's more likely to come from Taylor than uh, Phillips and, uh, he's got one more change up his sleeve uh, here in McKenna a couple of doubles made so far one of those players introduced earlier on Harry Clark just drying the ball on his blue shirt Harry Clark with this throw in for Ipswich Town. Final 20 minutes of this game. Town are 2 0 behind towards the near post. Back header on. Might be a chance in the box. Clearly, we're not very far more up than away by Everton. Commanding header, though, from Tarkovsky in the end. Now look, Wolfenden. Can Town exert a bit of pressure? Clark to Hutchinson. Hutchinson comes in field. Left footed cross. Headed away by Keane behind Chaplin. And as far as Wolfenden. 19 to play. Davis, in comes his cross to the gloves of Pickford. And that's that. It was uh, Luke Wolfenden that carried all the instructions on the field of play from Kieran McKenna. It involved Leif Davis, Cameron Burgess, and also with Smodic coming on, I would imagine that uh, they're hoping that Leif Davis can push on more, rely on uh, Cameron Burgess to cover him. Uh, like we saw in the championship in the first division and Smodix to try and come in as much as possible and join Liam de Lapp in forward areas that's what I think reading between the lines I saw them all having a chat and I would imagine if you're involving all those players that's probably what they're trying going to try and do Decor has gone down holding his head after a challenge with uh, Liam de Lapp. doesn't look like the referee's overly interested in that though 
in terms of uh, any threat of it being serious foul play. Decor is up on his feet, just uh, twisting and flexing his neck somewhat. Uh, so play will continue without the need for uh, any medical intervention. Uh, 18 minutes to go exactly uh, in this game, and uh, Everton still lead by two goals to nil. 29,862 uh, watching this game. A little triangle of Everton fans in the cobbled sand opposite in uh, sunshine. Yeah, there's That's that awesome. move, Brenner. Smodic's going. We haven't got the ball yet, but Smodic's going there. Leif Davis taking a risk, and Cameron Burgess going out. So that uh, probably is uh, the gist of the uh, changes. And Die gets away from Taylor. Still, Illumin and Die for Everton. Loose ball goes to the far side, and Die Smodic keeps it in play, but only for uh, Corey in the end. As Ashley Young goes back towards uh, Jordan Pickford, and he plays it straight back towards Tarkovsky. Now, Idrissa Guy up to Element in die on the left hand side. It's at Mikalenko, the number 19 infield to McNeil, drifts away from Hutchinson, who goes and sticks with him. And die gets between two players, Clark and Hutchinson, is impeded by at least one of them. It's a free kick to. Everton. Maybe a slight loose challenge, but not much of one. The referee was very sharp on it, but uh, not, a, not really a dangerous position. Everton are like this position because they like to hit diagonals into the box, and this is very much on the diagonal. This is a chance for Everton to cause some problems for Ipswich Town. Free kick, maybe 12 yards outside the Ipswich area, McNeil to knock it in, looking for a colleague towards the far stick, it's recycled into the centre, chance for Decore, now taken away from him by a town defender, so that tries to run the ball away from danger, couldn't do that, and Dye now manages to keep his feet against Delap, who's hauling him back, and then the reverse pass, looking for Harrison, is blocked off by Town. Town can get it away, Chaplin, square to Clark, Sean Deitch unhappy with a foul on his player and Dye, Play continuing, Hutchinson down the right-hand side, Town have got to score soon if they've got a chance of getting something from this game, they won't now, because Mikalenko takes the ball away from Hutchinson, gives it to McNeil, who gets around the pitch, Dwight McNeil, Morsey intercepts, turns into a decent pass for Hutchinson, Taylor coming in field, prods it into the area, Smodix to Delap, who hits it, pretty cleanly, not a million miles away from the target, but it is into the crowd, it's still 2-0. Yeah, good hit, but we've come alive down this side, Harry Clark is backing up his partner, Amari Hutchinson, really well. Uh, that's good fullback play by Harry Clark. Nice to see him back out there. He's full of running, full of honesty. And this, this is starting to go quite well down here. And I, I think Connor Chaplin is doing a, an efficient job very yeah. quietly in there. He's just, you, you can see him sort of pointing a finger or two now. You know, he just knows how to just progress the play. We've missed him a little bit in there. It's sort of four one in behind. Sorry, four players in behind to lap really across the park. Davis one side, Hutchinson the other, with Chaplin and Smodix in the middle. Certainly, when Town attack, it's like that. With come on, Harry, come on, Harry, keep up, keep up his bets. So go on. Hutchinson on a run gets inside the Everton box, prods it back to Clark. Clark gives it back to Hutchinson on the left corner. A little ball in field intercepted before Chaplin could get there. Who's going to get the loose ball? It's Calvert Lewin, just a smidgen ahead of Burgess. And then his ball forwards, deflected off Harry Clark, stays in play. Wolfen gives it to Clark. Clark stretches and plays it back to Murich, all he could do really. Now it's with Cameron Burgess. Can look as if they're going to have a go. They've got to. They've got 14 minutes plus to score twice. Morsey lofts the ball out to Davis, nothing he can do with it. Not what was needed in that instance. Out for a through to Everton. As George Hurst jumps back towards the bench. That was just an overhit ball there, by but you could see the instructions of Kieran McKenna get Leif Davis further down that touchline, which he did. He was readily available, but the ball was just overhit. Still 14 minutes plus to go in this game. Up pops Davis on the far side, wins the header, but it's dropped down to be a bit of possession for Everton. Pickford just outside his six-yard area, takes the ball to his left-hand side, then plays it out short to uh, Michael Keane. 
He took a risk with that ball, wasn't the best. Morsey wins it well for Tam. Morsey to the lap, it runs to Hutchinson just outside the area by the byline. Now tiptoes into the box. Telemari Hutchinson comes in field, shoots, but it goes beyond the far post. And he touched from Smodix, might have taken it into the net. It's come off an Everton player, Tam at least have won a corner kick. Yeah, that was better. We're looking a little bit of a threat, especially down this side. It's pretty good, you know. And, uh, got them a little bit worried. They're bound to be, haven't been given away 2 0 leads earlier on the season, twice Everton. Corner kick to Ipswich Town. Is there still hope for them in this game? It's Jack Taylor on this set piece. 13 minutes to go, 2 0 Everton. Punishably not very far by Pickford, out as far as Hutchinson inside the visitors' penalty area. He gives it back to Morsey. Morsey then moves it out to the far side and Taylor. Taylor, clever, first time ball down the left to Smodix, faced by Calvert Lewin, back defending. In comes Smodix cross, Burgess with header onto the roof of the net. Yeah, I like that, that's good. Got the ball down that left hand side, and that ball coming in was a dangerous one, and it was always going to be a blue shirt that was going to get the first touch on it. Decent header, not far over the bar. I think Pickford was a little bit worried about it. 60th competitive meeting between these two sides. Everton 25 wins down the years, Town uh, just to 15 overall. They've been more and more likely. It's going to be 26 wins from the uh, 60. The way things are going. George Hurst, final throw of the dice for uh, Kieran McKenna, just uh, getting himself ready down below us uh, for a throw to uh, Everton. 12 minutes away from their first away win of the season. It is going to be uh, Liam Delap, no big surprise, he's the player, hasn't been able to add to his uh, four goals this season, but uh, four from eight Premier League appearances, that's a pretty good ratio for the Manchester City player. Gets a, a warm handshake and a pat on the back from Kieran McKenna as George Hurst onto the field. Yeah, that's a correct substitution. I mean, we must use George Hurst as much as possible, really, because he's a good player. He shouldn't be left on the bench all the time. And sometimes Liam Delatz, you know, he's, he's, he's done his bit and he's got to come off. Morsey to the right-hand side. Hutchinson outside the Everton box. A little step over. Gets away from his man, Mikalenko. Has to squeeze his cross. It's out for a corner kick to... Uh, it's a stand. let's go back to Graham. Southampton have done an Everton from a few weeks ago from 2-0 up. They trail Leicester 3-2 deep into stoppage time. Oh, my word. I wonder what that'll mean for Russell Martin, if indeed anything. Corner kick to Ipswich Town. It's almost the championship promotion side out there now for Ipswich Town. What, just a couple of summer signings, I think, in the current team? Corner kick to Ipswich, 10 minutes to go against Everton, they're 2-0 down, it's going to be Davis with an away swinger from underneath the Everton fans, in low towards Chapler, we've seen that before, didn't meet it as he would have wished, but it was a chance, it was straight at Pickford, had he hit it cleanly, it might have been different. Well, it worked in the Championship, it worked, it's work, worked in the Premier League as well, so it's a good corner kick, he, he knows how to just get in that loose position, probably about 10 yards from goals, that's all, Connor Chaplin, he should have done better, he's We've seen him really sort of hit the target on many occasions from that same corner kick. It's incredible when you look at that, Tim. It's only Murich and Smodix who arrived in the summer. Ball out far side. Kieran McKenna's thoughts to come before six o'clock. We'll try our best to uh, speak to an Ipswich Town player and send the interview back before then uh, as well. Here comes a change for uh, Everton. Off goes their first goal scorer, Illiman uh, Indai. And he's going to be impressed by uh, Oral Mangala, who's a defensive midfielder. Taking off uh, a wide attacker. That's a signal of intent from Sean Dyche. And Dye taking a while, which he's entitled to do. If Town are ahead at Brentford in a week's time, I'll be more than happy for somebody to come off at uh, Snell's pace at this stage of the game. Mangala's on the field, a full Belgian international. Nine minutes to go on BBC Radio Civic Sport. It's back-to-back uh, -back defeats for Town at the moment. Everton adding their name to the list of uh, Liverpool, Man City and uh, West Ham. Throw forward from Ashley Young. Straight involved is uh, Mangala with a, a header. He's on loan from uh, French club Lyon for the season. Now he's battling with Chaplin. Chaplin gets the ball back to Taylor. Taylor running with it for town. He's done well. 
And plays it in field off the outside of his right boot to Morsey. Now Clark, the number two, back in field to the captain. Sparked some late drama at Southampton. Can he help Tang get back into this one, Morsey? What a win that's going to be for Leicester on the south coast. Chaplin with the ball in, headed away on the edge of his six-shot area by Tarkovsky. He and Keane have been pretty dependable. Chaplin with a couple of keepy up he touches, then brought down by Mangala. It's free kick in a good position for town. Yeah, well done, Connor Chaplin. You, you're causing them a little bit of a problem. You're keeping us playing. Uh, you're doing a good job as number 10 there. Well done. Yeah, good to see him getting a few more minutes of that Premier League action. Premier League debuts today for two players, Burgess and Harry Clark. Can have got a score from this if they're going to have a chance of taking anything from the game. It's a free kick wide left. Leif Davis has got the quality to conjure something up. Plenty of players forward in blue off to our right-hand side. Everton lead 2-0. In it comes, headed away by Tarkovsky. Wolfenden will get on it. Will keep it in play, or will he? Nope, he's going to let it go out for a throw-in, which will be taken by uh, Harry Clark on this near side. Clark in front of the Sir Ralph Ramsey stand. Very close to the corner flag next to the tunnel. Long throw into the box from him. Fleck on header by Hurst. Maybe a chance for Smodix. No, well defended by Ashley. Cleared by Harrison in a kind of a anywhere forward will do fashion. Murich pretty much on the halfway line. Gives it to Taylor. Taylor, who we heard from earlier on on um, match day, spoke at yesterday's pre-match press conference. Here is Hutchinson tormenting Mikalenko down the right-hand side, taking on his man. Hasn't shot just yet. Mikalenko needs some help from McNeil. He gets it, and McNeil gives the ball back to the Ukrainian, whose clearance reaches Decore. Second half still goalless. Everton with those two first-half goals, the difference. Good cross-field ball. Can Harrison get there ahead of Davis? No, he can't. Well defended by Davis. Sean Deitch killing for a foul, but he knows in his heart of hearts as a rugged defender himself that there's no way there's anything wrong with that from <laughs> Leif Davis. Burgess to Smodix, full of life, having just come on as a sub. Infield to Hurst, plays the 1-2, Smodix with a cross towards the far post, it might have taken a deflection, it's spun back in field after the bounce. Hutchinson has it, rolls it back to Clark, first time cross from him, headed up by Keane, not fully away. Smodix was ready with a volley, but uh, headed away from him by Young. That wasn't far away from reaching the target there from Harry Clark. Final six minutes are underway. Everton fans not sitting overly comfortably as Ipswich have a throw in underneath the throw from Davis into the box comfortably headed away by Mangala Davis on the half volley sweeps the ball in field to Wolfenden live on BBC Radio Suffolk Sports town at the moment trailing Everton 2-0 Taylor to uh, Morsey Morsey gives it to Clark approaching the final five minutes of this Delayed 3.15 start. Morsey to Hutchinson. Hutchinson tries to play it first time out. The referee says no handball. He was well positioned, Michael Oliver. Mikalenko loses out to Hutchinson. Chaplin steps over the ball. Hutchinson prods it in field to Morsey. Morsey goes back to Burgess. Exactly five minutes before the board goes up. Morsey towards Hurst in the box. He nods it down. It's all he could do. Cleared away by Everton towards Calvert Lewin. The battles with Wolfenden. Oh. Wolfenden foul Calvert Lewin, says uh, Michael Oliver. But I'm guessing by your groan, Mick, you disagree. No, I don't. Know. I, I think he's deliberately sort of got the referee involved there. I mean, that was, that's all he wanted was a little touch and hit the ground because he had no other thing he could do. On the halfway line. It's going to be a free kick to uh, Everton, who uh, are leading this game by two goals to nil. Both of them in the first half, Element in die and then Michael Keane. Fall from Tarkovsky for Everton. They haven't had the ball in the final third for a, a while. Nor did they now, really, because they've overhit that pass. It's a Clark throw in it right back. A few town fans have uh, given up on seeing their side stage. Uh, a late fight back. Mikalenko nods the ball down to Calvert Lewin. He gives it to McNeil. Now it's with Mangala. Bit of space for Ashley Young, far side. Closed down by Smodix. He crossed into the box. Calvert Lewin with a header well away from the goal. Good ball from Ashley Young. He, you know, nice early cross. They love the early cross, Everton, and he's found 
Uh, Calvert Lewin completely free, nobody near him, and he's headed the ball probably 12 yards wide. But Mills taking your calls afterwards on BBC Radio Suffolk 0800 141 2121. Mick will be alongside me for our next match day. That's on air from 2 till 6 next Saturday. We'll be at the G Tech Community Stadium in West London. Brentford, uh, the hosts. Uh, then two weeks today, Leicester are here. And then eight days after that, we're at T Tottenham Stadium that most of us are very excited about visiting for the first time. It's supposed to be an absolute beauty. Taylor carves the ball out to the right-hand side, finding Hutchinson. Hutchinson comes in field from this right, and he's occupied for the last ten minutes. Little ball around the corner, looking for Chapman. Well read by Everton. McNeil running the ball away for the Toffees. Out to the right-hand side, Decore. Back comes Leif Davis. Decore plays the ball up to Calvert-Lewin. Nice control from him. Got no support whatsoever. Held it up until Morsey robs him. Comes to be done by Sam Morsey. Clock ticking down for Ipswich Town. Sean Dyke's very, very animated down below us. Kieran McKenna, cool as a cucumber, arms folded. Hutchinson rolls the ball into the centre circle. Morsey helps it on its way to uh, Burgess. Back in field to Morsey. Then to Jack Taylor, trying to jink away from Mangala. Good ball from Burgess to Chaplin. Chaplin scoops it over the top of Mikolenko, but there's no blue shirt in there. And it's simple for Pickford, who is... Two minutes plus added on time away from a clean sheet. Yeah, we just need to create a chance or two. We've uh, actually we've improved with the changes. We've improved. We started to dominate the ball. The game is very much in the Everton half, and pretty good down the right hand side. Connor Chaplin's got himself in the game a lot, and we are creating a lot more around their penalty area, not so much inside the penalty area. It's Clark. With a throw back to Murich, it's the uh, Everton fans who have uh, found their voice. Ready to celebrate their first away win of the season. Good victory this for them. Taylor to Morsey. Back it goes to uh, Jack Taylor. Along the deck he finds uh, Sam Smodix. Now the keeper's had a great deal to do at all in this uh, second half. There is Taylor, gets away from a couple of players, good play from Taylor, he pulls the trigger, saved by Pickford. And then he gets up and then dives on the ball over the top of uh, George Hurst's feet. Yeah, good play by Jack Taylor, very, very good. Uh, he got himself a little position there. Um, not really troubled the goalkeeper too much, but uh, we've been better in the second half. That's the clearance from them. Um, Pickford. Wilfenden is going to go after it. Murich is available. First time he's uh, been anywhere near the ball. Still hasn't got a touch because it's gone straight to Burgess. I mentioned Aaron Murich's name for quite some time. Morsey into the centre circle. About ten seconds away from being told how much added on time there is uh, going to be. Taylor. Good ball forward. Hutchinson will keep it in by the corner flag. Needs bodies forward in the centre. Off to our right hand side. Hutchinson still has it. Left foot of ball into the box. Diving brave header away from Keane towards the studs of Connor Chaplin's boots. Four minutes have added on time to play. Town win the ball in midfield. Burgess and under Corey. There is Smodix. Might want to go it alone. Can't do much. Harrison on the far side for Everton underneath their fans. Smollett slides in, tries to hook his foot round the ball to win it. Town throw in. Davis gives it to Taylor. Still, Sean Dyke's a lively of the uh, two managers. Eight games into the Premier League season. Town will still be heading to Brentford next week, hoping for that first victory of the campaign. Probably off the back of successive defeats. Wolfenden. Finding Clark. Town still going, still game. Still showing plenty of spirits, as we know they will. Hutchinson with a cross over the box. This might be a chance. Taylor's underneath it. He should have left it for Snoddix. He's better position just behind him. The header's off target. Yeah, really a very, very strong, determined shout was what was needed. I, I take it he did call for the ball, but. If he has, then Taylor's got to leave it alone and, and let the man behind come. All the noise is coming from the uh, Everton fans. Long old trek down this morning for them has uh, been worth it. 
After 0800 141 2121, the phone number. Text 8133. Start those messages. SFK. WhatsApp. Start those with SFK as well. 08000 321 uh, 333. Your thoughts well can be for six and again on Monday night from six between six and seven on the blue hour. Always keen to hear from you then. Morsey to Burgess, Burgess up to Taylor. Taylor runs into Mangala, Mangala to Harrison. Harrison carries the ball over halfway. He'll be keen to just hold on to the ball. Davis has a, a lightweight challenge on him. Harrison goes down, buys a nice free kick off of uh, Cameron Burgess. Yeah, they've got two players in sort of forward areas, Harrison and McNeil, both left-footed, both really tidy on the ball. They don't lose possession very much at all. Oh, guys done well Useful to players. get away from Hurst. Keener goal scorer, gives the ball to Tarkovsky. Tarkovsky's taken out by George Hurst, the referee's played an advantage. Ashley Young's running forward with the ball, puts him behind for an offside. Calvert-Lewin. 90 seconds of this game to go, things have flared up far side, Smodix is involved, so too Young, Tarkovsky has a little shove at the Ipswich Town substitute. It's all now calmed down. And uh, the referee's talking to uh, James Tarkovsky purely as the Everton captain, I think. Free kick to uh, Everton. It's another defeat for Ipswich Town. Young. Lots of town fans are uh, leaving this one early. Mangala to Keane, back to uh, Pickford. Final minute of the added on four. Pickford puts one over the top. Davis, though, will get there. And go back to uh, Aaron Murich. Murich towards Clark. It's a good ball from Aaron Murich. Clark in field. Can town get a consolation goal? Chapman tries to lift it into space. Mangala read it and intercepted. Guy who's had a good game. Infield to Mangala. Upended by Morsey. Mangala takes a quick free kick to Harrison. Wanting to get away from Smodix. Plays it through for Calvert Lewin to make it 3 0. It's off Murich and it's wide. Another stop from Murich on Calvert Lewin. That looks certain to be 3 0 Everton. A wonderful chance, great save. We've got to give the credit, the goalkeeper credit. That's it for the first time in their top flight history. Ipswich Town start the season on a run of eight games without a victory. Back to back defeats off the back of the loss at West Ham before the international break. Town have resumed with a 2 0 home defeat to Everton. The wait sadly goes on. Yeah, I think uh, certainly when when it really, I suppose, when it really mattered, Everton in the first half were better than us all the way round the pitch. Really, you know, we we know we cling to the fact that we had an excellent chance uh, with Jack Taylor, um, and and then a, a possible penalty as well. But you know, apart from that, really, you know, Everton were really good in the first half. They had a really. I, what surprised me most of all was this air of confidence about them and, and sprightliness, if you like. They were really on their toes, they really looked confident, they were very together, they had a lovely variation of, uh, of the way to play football, which is unusual for the Premiership these days, um, and we couldn't really match them, and, and they got themselves into a two-goal lead, and, and possibly deservedly. You know, We came out second half, and, and I think we improved. Everton sort of maybe sort of just sat on their heels a little bit, looked as if, you know, 2-0 would do them, uh, gave us the opportunity to take the game to them. And then I think when Kieran McKenna made the changes, they were desperately needed and they were good changes. And the players responded to the changes, you know. The instructions were taken out there through Luke Wolf and then he gave everybody the instruction that the manager had given him. And we went about it, and we did it, we carried it out, and I thought we improved very, very well. You know, we, we started to dominate the ball uh, territorially. It was all, always us. It was much in, in the Everton half, but we couldn't create the chances. I think possibly just had the one uh, chance. That's all in the second half. But uh, we did improve, um, but we're going to find it difficult in, in, in this division without question, because every time... We just seem to look at the, and, and this is the problem with our supporters as well and people that live here. We're looking at the division so much and we're thinking, 
well, we've, we've played against a lot of the teams at the top. Surely the ones near the bottom won't be as good as us. You know, and we're getting a lot of surprises. We had a surprise at West Ham. We've, you know, we've had a surprise today, really. You know, that the, the teams close to the bottom are not bad at all, you know, and, and we've really got to be absolutely on top of the game in this division. There's no question, you know. Uh, you know, we haven't got to chase it. I still say we haven't got to chase it, but, but today, really, a little bit like West Ham, uh, not quite good enough, you know. I, I, I think that West Ham... You know, there was a story in the West Ham game just before half-time that, that pretty much made, you know, what the scoreline was going to be in that mad five minutes just before half-time. And unfortunately, we were on the receiving end of that mad five minutes. And we came away thinking we didn't play very well today. And I think the same would be, you know, when we take stock of this performance uh, on Monday, Tuesday, you know, we're, I think generally speaking, there'll be nobody at, at Playford Road that will really seriously think that we played well today. It was a difficult game against what we've you know, found out today. This isn't a bad Everton team. It really is very, very capable. I mean, Ashley Young, 39 years of age, he can play still because his touch is brilliant. His first touch, I watched him all through the game, and constantly think he's going to struggle he's going to struggle but because his touch is so good and his positional play is so good that he gets through it when we drilled a shot at uh, Pickford late in the game he parried it he got up and collected it but the one player that had gone all the way in from outside the box to make sure his goalkeeper was all right was Ashley Young and that was late in the game you know so Credit, you know, really good. 39 years of age, did really well, you know, and they're not a bad side, Everton. Believe Doesn't sound me. like you're worried then about Ipswich Town and, and the lack of a win. You're keeping, you're keeping nice and calm and cool. In case anybody is worried, what, what's your message to them? Well, I am because there are other teams in the division that are equally finding it difficult as well. Not just for the first time either. You know, we've got Crystal Palace who all of a sudden have plummeted a little bit. You know, and and they're. Uh, Wolves are finding this season harder than probably the season before last season and one before that. You know, there are teams there that have got problems as well, you know, and I, I, I really always look to our manager. I've got great confidence in our manager. I think that ultimately he's going to see what he wants to see and he's going to get us playing better. And um, I, I'm disappointed with this one, Brenna, really, because this is at home. I thought, yeah. I thought we would really run Everton really, really close throughout the game and possibly nick something from it. But we, there was no real evidence of that, so that that has worried me a little bit. But I think that when we go away, we've got to be a little bit more resolute, you know. And, and uh, you know, I've got my own sort of plans about away from home, you know sack the number 10 away from home and let's have three up and down midfield players just to make us a little bit more sound but that's a different story today I expected more I always expect more in front of this brilliant crowd that we've uh, we've produced you know that they, they are they're noisy they want the best from the team and they are with the team that's the main thing and and unfortunately today we didn't give it to them well, I won't ask you to expand on it, but Graham might in the next half an hour. He might pick up on your point about three midfielders, maybe for Brentford and Tottenham and other games. Uh, I'm going to head downstairs and hopefully uh, grab some audio with that uh, Kieran McKenna and ideally an Ipswich town player as soon as we possibly can, talking about their side's 2-0 defeat to Everton. <laughs> 